Hello. Happy Crimson Katoos Day. Oh good, the new captions are working. Yeah, so that's a couple new things this week. I I found new captions, hopefully better captions, hopefully captions that won't sometimes stop um, in the middle of doing stuff for no reason. Mouse Miss, good to see you. Happy Crimson Katoos Day. Always time for tea. Good to see you as well. Thank you for letting me know about the tag change. Of course I forgot, but um, yeah, I, I got to change it just now. Eden Wraith, good to see you. Artistic Coolisies, good to see you as well. Oh wow, always time for tea. You can't often watch the streams due, due to crazy work schedule, but it's okay tonight. I was worried there was no stream. No, yeah, I sorry, just a little bit later than usual. I'm never on time, but just a few minutes later. So I'm so sorry to, to keep you like waiting and doubting. Um, yeah, you most Tuesdays, most Tuesdays I'm here. So yes, it's good to have a break. Blahots and happy Crimson Tuesday as well. Yay. Yeah, so this, the new captions, uh, I saw on Twi on my Twitter timeline, um, there is, um, I guess there are mods and stuff you can apply to your OB OBS. And this particular one is something, so this is like kind of something I, a plugin, I guess it's a plugin that I downloaded and installed. And it, I think it's working pretty great, except it said OBS weird, but <laughs> I think it's working a little bit better than what I had before already. So <laughs> um, so we're going to go with that. We're going to see how that works. Uh, and also a couple other new things um, b b b before we get into... Um, oh yeah, I should do developer update. Yeah, I'm working on chapter 5 of 7, section 2 of 3. And right now I'm kind of... Um, even though section 2 of 3 is sort of like half done right now, I'm kind of programming in the transition from 2 into the third section, which is kind of nice. Deluxe Touch, good to see you. Hello Tuesday, friends. Hello, hello. Yeah, I guess um, the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys a couple new things that, that I, I put in to... Oh, wow, well, yeah. Let me move this up a little bit. Uh, the, uh, for anyone who subscribed to the channel, I changed two of the animated Nancys because they were not um, like quite as different. I had one that was just blanking and it was too subtle. <laughs> Disaster Squad, good to see you. Yes, um, that's another thing. I, um, there was a, a um, Crimson Gazette came out today as well. And part of it, uh, there is uh, links to my chat I had with Disaster Squad on his YouTube channel. Uh, way back in July, actually. It just missed being in last month's Gazette. And it was um, a really nice conversation we had about Disaster Squad is a fellow in, uh, indie game dev, solo indie game dev, and so we have a lot in common with that. We talked about that. We talked about adventure games in general. And it was a really nice conversation. Uh, so for that link, you can check out the Crimson Gazette this month. Cosmic Void 3, good evening. JBL, Judith Butler's Lover, good to see you. Yes, yeah, so subscribers, there is, there is a new rotating Nancy. And there's also a new Nancy that is eating. Arrogant Logician, good to see you as well. Welcome back. So those are the two new ones that we have for for subscribers. <laughs> the spin gif a gif reminds you of some sci-fi show. <laughs> Deluxe Tux. Yeah, it didn't take too long for me to do the spinning one. Um, I kind of already had like a three-quarter view of Nancy on both sides, left side and right side of her face. So <laughs> David Alexander, good to see you as well. Yeah. So that's it. And yeah, so um, as of last week, I, I did make a bucket emoji. So that's the other one. That's a fairly recent addition. And yes, there are there are bucket t-shirts. Um, because a few people have asked about that, so there are a, few, a couple bucket t-shirt designs. There's one with the background, and then there's one just with the bucket. And so, I think there is a um, Society6 link. Fog is green, good to see you. Yeah, so those are the bucket links. Hopefully they were working. They We, we, we um, QA'd those last time, so hopefully those are working. <laughs> Go on, Sama, good to see you as well. So that's that. Um, that's the Society6 stuff. <laughs> I don't. It's not on all the different kinds of Society6 merch. I haven't really gotten too much into that, but uh, it is on those t-shirts at the very least. So we'll we'll see how those end up looking. I have not ordered any myself yet. Okay, next. The other next is yeah. So no Dan this week either. Dan has been busy. We know that Dan's been kind of. Um, 
super occupied with his other types of work recently. But I uh, hope, hopefully we'll see him, you know, um, sometime this summer or fall at some point. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing art tonight again. We're going to be working on the fish. Um, we've kind of been working on a bit of the um, animation for it. And, uh, and then more Rise of the Dragon tonight. So there we go. <laughs> One other thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, Strange Dungeon. So this is the other game that I was working on fairly recently. Uh, there is a Steam store page for it now for wishlisting purposes. And it's... Um, oh, I can move this back now. <laughs> and uh, it's it's looking pretty good so far. Um, there should be a demo in the next couple of months. So when there's a demo, I'll definitely let you guys know. The special Carl, good to see you. Happy Crimson Tuesday. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be able to... I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to play it on stream. Maybe I'll stream it. Um, I know Elia was talking about streaming it as well. So hopefully we'll have something to show you guys in the next couple of months for that. And I suppose... <laughs> uh, so I suppose I will uh, introduce myself and then play the trailer and then we'll get on to business. Because we don't have a lot of business to get through today. Well, I'm really pleased so far with the captions. There's even in my OBS, there's a little like window that has the captions, so I can even review the captions on in in the interface, which is kind of nice. Ah, Judith Butler's lover. But I mentioned Julia. You mentioned because you mentioned last time I started playing Disco Elysium three days ago, and it's hooked me like the bucket fish. Fantastic. Yeah, I I haven't gotten a chance to go back to play it um, since last stream, but it's 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 a very cool game. <laughs> very, very nice to play, and I, I definitely will be getting back to it um, at some point. But I'm glad you're liking it, too. I mean, it, I, it, it comes highly recommended by so many people, and uh, I it, it had it, it got it went on sale for a substantial amount. I'm like, wow. Um, although, of course, I totally advocate paying full price for games. <laughs> Because eventually when I when I launch mine, I hope people don't wait for a sale either. But yay, more people in Disco Elysium. Oh good, Disaster Squad, you're doing a background for your th your Cursed 3? Are, are you finished Cursed 3? I can't remember if it's launched or you're still it's still a work in progress. Nice to know that people are working um, at the same time that I'll be working tonight. <laughs> Pre-orders accepted. Um... <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. I don't think that's how this. Okay. Oh, good. Foggy screen redeem. Show a fun book. Disaster Squad. Okay, not for another month or so. Okay, nice. Okay, thank you. I will just open that up real quick. I will do a book. Um, let's see what I have. Okay. And open up the Disaster Squad link. The image. Oh, nice. Oh, scrolling background. Scrolling background. Very nice. Jim plays games. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. Good to see you. Okay, book. 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 Let's see what I have down here. Um, am I prepped for book? Okay, I think I've got something here. Okay, one moment. I will get book for the redemption, and then we will play trailer, and then we will get on get on with it. Okay, one second. <laughs> we'll all buy three copies of the Crimson Diamond Eden. <laughs> Oh, Jim plays games. Yeah, so the strange dungeon. Um, so this, so this, the muffin crab and some of the background elements in here. So this is a, a uh, turn-based roguelike uh, game, exploration game that uh, my friend Ilya, uh, who who I knew from college times, has been working on him and Anuj, just another another programmer, and um, Ilya is the artist on it as well as most other things for it. Um, he he's coming out with this game, and I got to do some environment work on it and some. I guess some creature work on it using Blender. So I said, I think I showed you guys that like a, a few months ago. I showed you how I've been working in Blender to create backgrounds. What well, was for this project, and the the wish lists are open for it, and there will be a demo available in the next couple of months. Yes. Ooh, go on with some exciting commissions. Fantastic. Good, 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 good. Yeah, Jim plays games. If you like turn-based and roguelikes, yeah, definitely um, check out. Just you can Google Strange Dungeon on Steam and uh, find the page that way. Okay, I'm going to grab the book. I'll be right back.
quit. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So this, okay, let me go to uh, big screen. Okay. And I'll turn off the chroma key for a second. Okay. Oh, well, that's not very... <laughs> Let's fix that. Okay, that's a little better. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's my book. So this is actually, this is not a book of mine. I think this actually was a book of my dad's. And I hadn't actually had a book redemption prepped for today. So I just happened to have this one close in hand. <laughs> Foggy's green, you like the green. Okay, so this is a book. Uh, Samurai, the Weapons and Spirit of the Japanese Warrior. So this was just, I think this is something my dad had picked up on his own. Um, you know, who doesn't like a samurai? Samurai are cool. Uh, so we've got lots of nice pictures. Of, so these are sword guards, which have wonderful relief carvings in them. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. <laughs> Karajitsu, good to see you. Speaking of Karajitsu, yeah, this is very, um, very appropriate for you thematically. Karajitsu, oh, well, that looks like a wizard hat. Look at that. That's amazing. Um, so Karajitsu, uh, that was someone else that I mentioned in the latest edition of the Crimson Gazette. Uh, Karajitsu played through the Crimson Diamond, the, the, um, the demo. And he did not, I, I thought, you know, oh, I'll, get, I'll come to chat if he needs my help, hints or whatnot. He, he, he completely finished it pretty much on his own. He was pro, so super pro with it. Um, so this is, of course, wonderful uh, sets of samurai armor here. Um, so definitely check out Karajitsu's channel. I'm going to actually do a shout out. Uh, Karajitsu says the demo is worth, is worth every second if you haven't played it yet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Karajitsu. Karajitsu. Chunky boy. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, oh, wow, look at that. There's some stuff kind of, I've never really seen, like, just a mask before like that. Kind of, kind of nice. <laughs> of course, Karajitsu, I hopefully that the, 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 the shout out worked for you. But yeah, I'm super impressed with how you played it. Oh, what's this? Uh, ooh, wow. Between 600 and 800 BC, terracotta, Haniwa style. So Japanese sculpture, terracotta sculpture. I've never seen that before. This is my first time actually looking at this book. This has just been on a shelf. My dad was always fascinated with, you know, samurai movies, of course. He was big watching uh, samurai stuff. He was, he really knew a lot about the history. Oh, why is this not? Yeah. He really knew a lot about the history, samurai times, Edo Jidai, so on and so forth. Oh, this is really nice. You can actually see, oh, it's not the page. Oh yeah, here on this other side. Uh, there is some samurai here. He'd watch all the samurai movies. That was his big thing. Actually, he, oh wow, <sighs> Toshio Mufune, Jojimbo. Um, kind of something he liked to talk about uh, is that he said he, in the part of Japan he grew up when he was really, um, like in his teen teenage years, um, he, when they went back to where they used to live, the area they used to live, um, Apparently, they kind of lived nearby one of the ninjas, ninja clans or something, is what he liked to talk about. So, of course, he also liked ninja as well, ninja and samurai. <laughs> oh. All that stuff. So, that's this is actually, so that was one of my dad's. So, the fog is green. Thank you for the redemption. Um, really cool samurai book with a lot of really cool, um, with really cool uh, photos. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to turn back on the chroma key. Close. And yeah, really good resource. Absolutely. Yeah, Samurai Armor, I, it's, <laughs> it's you know, so whenever you play, I know I'd play role-playing games, it'd actually be stuff like Wizardry 7 and Wizardry 8, probably earlier Wizardry 2. They would have, like, they'd have Japanese armor. So, of course, and you could actually have a Samurai. It was one of the classes. And so I would always have a Samurai, of course, in my group. And he would wear, you know, all the, all the armor bits. They could find. 
Yes, and always time for tea. Japanese castles are gorgeous and they, they maintain them really nicely. Um, I remember when I went to Japan when I was really young, of course. It's one of the things the relatives will always take you to because, yeah, they're, they're super, super distinctive. <laughs> yes, Toshio Mufune. Amber Amberzine, good to see you. Yes, when Nancy hides behind the tapestry, she's practicing her ninjutsu. Ooh, a tapestry. That's that's something that you can do in the demo. Karajutsu, I don't know if Karajutsu did that in, when he played. But there are lots of things, you know, upon first playthrough of the demo that you might not um, see the first time you play it. Karajutsu, I have never built cardboard samurai armor. Never. Ooh, Elden Wing Rasmus says it's a pretty epic semi character class I, I i love having that stuff in it i kind of like what a kind of mixture of different influences the wizardry games had into them because you could have you could have all kinds of stuff mixed into that to like those games but thank you th uh, for that i'm going to introduce myself welcome to crimson tuesday um, i am the developer of the crimson diamond julia minamata and i've been working on the crimson diamond it is a mystery adventure game and um, it's basically just me, although I do have a musician with me, Dan Policar, who is sometimes here with us. Sometimes we stream music development with Dan's role in MT32. But Dan's been super busy recently and hasn't been able to make it. Um, but he was here composing something for us back in June. And you can find that link also in the, in the Crimson Gazette. In fact, what I was going to do... Hold on, let me just quickly... I figure what I'm going to do is... Um... I, was, I might as well show you guys what that looks like, so you have an idea. Um, let's see. In fact, let's just see the current issue for legibility's sake. Okay, I'm going to share, I'm going to go to... Where's OBS? Okay. I am going to go back to show and tell, and we're going to do just a quick show and tell of... Um, where is it? Window capture. Um, dev blog. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. So here, oh, yeah, well, hmm. <laughs> okay. That'll do. Okay. So this is the, this is issue 47 of the Crimson Gazette, you can see. Um, and, I mean, let me turn it back on for myself. Hopefully you can watch this scroll. So it has, um, give a quick developer update at the top. This talks about the the t-shirts and, and all that. Here is one of the reasons Dan was busy. If you can, I don't know, hopefully this is something you guys can see. Between the Borders, good to see you. Ah, oh, wow. You say, buddy of yours was one of the premier English language armor experts. He worked with Yoroi no Kozando, and I managed to visit when I was in Japan, bought one of their mempo. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Oh, so the pre-made cardboard samurai armor sets are really well made. That sounds a lot, a lot of fun. Between the Borders says, As much as I love Japanese armor, it's so complicated to make correctly. Odoshi lacing alone is a pain, much less the things like printed leather, gilt edges, etc. Such works of art. Yeah, they're amazingly gorgeous. Um, but yeah, hopefully this, hopefully this is scrolling for people. Um, let me just, I'm to quickly take a peek. Okay, good. It is. All right. So yeah, so Dan has been busy. Dan actually came to Toronto and he was playing with Sean Paul. And I got to go backstage and meet Sean Paul and, and see Dan. And Dan gave me a hat. And the hat, hat is upstairs. So I don't have it. Um, but yeah, so there's the Dan the Band hat that I'm wearing in, in the shots. This is a Disaster Squad cast. This is on YouTube. You can check it out. There is a, the link here in the Gazette. So that's, that's kind of a good thing to have. Ooh, thank you for that. Pixel Funk, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, so that's Disaster Squad, who was in chat, I'm not sure if he's still here, but Disaster Squad is, is working on Cursed 3, which is all of his like completely self-made, self-published, solo indie game dev games that he's been making. Um, and I love talking to fellow indie game devs. We have a great conversation, it's like a couple of hours where we talk about adventure games and all that. And here's Kerjitsu. So Kerjitsu streamed Crimson Diamond demo. I think I think Kerjitsu took like an hour and a half, maybe. I, I tend to tell streamers that if they're playing the demo, it takes about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how fast they are. And yeah, you just buzzed right through it. <laughs> Pixel Funk, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Dan's music for the game. Dan has made actually a lot of tracks for the game. I actually have a Google Doc with all the tracks listed. There's more than 24. 
and uh, I just now I have to like bully Dan into getting them to that polished state where he sends them to me because he's got a lot of stuff that's like 80 or 90 percent there he just has to like fix it up a little bit and send it to me and and so I'm chasing him with that stuff yeah <laughs> Bill Coon, good to see you as well um I, I I stream in different places kind of depending uh, depending on a lot of factors um, sometimes if it's like super hot, <laughs> I'll stream like I'll stream like down so that I'm not boiling. But it kind of does depend on on the situation. But yeah, that's the Karajitsu stream for it, and, and there's a link to the playthrough. <laughs> Karajitsu, I don't think you've got a YouTube channel where you post VODs later. Um, so hopefully, um, hopefully you've got like an Amazon Prime subscription or some other subscription where your your videos stay up on Twitch for like the 90 days instead of the 60 or something. However that works. Uh, and here are the animated GIFs that uh, you subscribers can enjoy in chat, and that's kind of just all of them. There's the wave, the pop-up, the rotate, the eating. Well, the eating is a kind of a hard one to see, so I don't know. I might replace that one again. We'll see. Ah, sweet. Kerjitsu, awesome. Yeah, so when Kerjitsu has the video up, um, I will probably edit the newsletter so that we have like a permalink or permanent link. Um, so that won't ever go away. Uh, and of course, here is the bucket, the bucket um, emote that everyone can enjoy in chat. And yeah, and so usually I just I'll have like a quick thing of like all the streams that I've done between this the last July Gazette and August Gazette. So this all the live streams are here. Also, all the playlists I've done. Uh, so there's the Rise of the Dragon one currently. And uh, my other Let's Plays I've done, these are all completed. The Personal Nightmare one, Last Half of Darkness, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. <laughs> all hail the bucket. And, yeah, and then also I have the like, Craft Corner, so an update on my cross-stitching stuff that I do. Um, and then usually there's a rock rock section. So this is, this is the, the shore of Lake Ontario, um, blessed with an abund abundance of rocks of all shapes and sizes. And sometimes like looking at this, and so this is the, po the point I, I make in the Gazette is sometimes when you're just looking, your eyes can just kind of blur and not really want to take in the actual variety and uniqueness of every rock that's on the shore. And if you start really taking a close look, like actually, you know, squatting down, taking a look, um, and you can just start picking stuff out. You know, maybe you can look for certain unusual textures or certain unusual colors. And the more you get used to the types of rocks that are in an area, the more you can kind of find the ones that are a little bit different from the other ones sometimes. And this time, this visit to the shore, I picked out some particular colors. And when you wet the colors, you can really see, see the colors get enhanced by that, just, just, just from wetting with water. And so I was really pleased to see how much the colors kind of jump out when I pick these. And when you see this, you might not look at this picture and think there's anything like that in this shot. But it's just a matter of really picking out and looking super closely at, at the stuff that's around you. <laughs> and here's here actually um, some more from also the shore of Lake Ontario that I also picked up. And sometimes it's a matter of also like really looking at the smaller pieces too, the little bits of rocks here and there. So we can see um, just the variety of texture, the variety of color. You've got this one that looks like it's got gas bubbles in it. And I was looking through my pebble identification pamphlet. And I actually think what happens is, yes, yeah, some rocks form bubbles of gas that then get filled in with other rocks. And that's why you've got these round dots in this one. And I, I do believe that's the kind of rock that that is. Um, but the bottom one here is um, kind of a quartz, I think, potentially. And here's what it looks like when you shine light through it. And this is all just, you know, stuff to enjoy. Um, if you just take the time and really look at what your surroundings are and, and I think uh, I think adventure games kind of train us to do that as well a lot of the time and just knowing more about what you're looking at and paying that extra special attention even looking at stuff with a loop I find that really enhances my enjoyment of looking at rocks and minerals um, all of that can just mean that the enjoyment you can derive from something just gets multiplied and multiplied Yes, always time for tea. Well, your uncle is a prospector. He often says that the rocks in an area indicate if there are gemstones or precious min metals nearby. Yes, very, very, very true. There are indicator minerals, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a particular kind, like for instance, peridot um, and olivine and things like that can be indicators of diamonds, for instance, because those types of rocks and minerals come from the same part of the Earth's mantle as diamonds do. So if you see them in an area, it could mean potentially that there are also diamonds in that area because diamonds come from the same 
um, geological location as other minerals. So that's kind of, a, that's super interesting. I also read this uh, article recently about how even the vegetation in an area will tell you what kind of rock is underneath because, you know, if, it's, if the vegetation is growing on limestone um, versus growing on like chalk versus growing on other things, you can actually have some indication of what, what to expect based on the trees and the bushes and the flowers. Kimberlite, yes, kimberlite uh, pipes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so get, getting an idea of um, what you can find um, in like the, the local rivers or or um, mud muddy areas and things like that. Peridot, I, I hardly know dough. Uh, yeah, so because uh, yeah, it's kind of it's 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 not rare, but I guess relatively compared to other things, it's rare for uh, rocks to come from so deep in the Earth's mantle um, and burst out like that. So if you if you find something that looks like it, it that has that potential. Um, then there could be further um, motivation to investigate and maybe do it like a drill sample or something. Yeah, and then here is, <laughs> I, I've been leaving it as this animated gif of the fish going into the bucket because that's what we've been working on for the past few weeks. So that's it. So this is, this is the August Gazette. And so that comes out, this comes out every, um, every month, like mid month. And of course, along, along the side here, I put like, um, links to stuff like video links and things like that along this side and so when Karajitsu gives me the link to the VOD I'll put it on this side. I only like to put stuff on here that is going to stay linked and even still sometimes I check back on these and they're not there anymore but I like to really make sure that these ones are as permanent as possible. Um, but yeah so I mean usually if you go for instance if you go to crimsondiamond.com you'll see this website. If you click on the dev blog it'll open to this and this is just every every you just can scroll this forever this is just the entire dev blog you can see i'm scrolling down to june scrolling through so you can just scroll through this entire thing and just read it if you so desired but um, i also want to show this feature really quickly there is a high visibility version of the dev blog because i know um, some people can have difficulty reading um, a dark background and light lettering. So there is a version of the dev blog. If you click on the high visibility version where the type is bigger and it's white, white background and dark, dark type. Um, and that's for something I can do relatively easily. And if it helps people to read the stuff and enjoy the stuff, then I'm all for it. Oh, the, the Gazette went into your promotions Gmail folder automatically again. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know how the, the Gmail folders work. <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad you like the close-ups of the characters. I, I really like them too. Um, they're they're pretty. Um, they're, they're kind of. I, I like I like having them in adventure games, for whatever reason. I know nowadays when we have higher resolution um, characters, we, we it's kind of we don't need them anymore so much. But I just love the portraits so much, as as a kind of a detail. But yeah, so there's a high visibility of of that as well, and also. Uh, um, there's a subscription. You can subscribe to the to the to the Gazette on the far left here. You can subscribe to the list. That that link is also here. There's also a high con contrast version of the website. That is the same website, just black and white in bigger bigger type. So, so there's that. And yeah, if you want to get email updates, you can just sign up there. <laughs> anyway, thank you. You know, um, you're saying props for the website accessibility feature. No, I, I, um, I really appreciate because I think you were the one. Oh, I've actually have this kind of completely over the caption. Speaking of accessibility features, um, but um, I, I think you're the one who even mentioned it to me as someone who said, you know, it might be a good idea to have something that has better legibility. And it's like so much. It's easy enough for me to do. And if it, like I said, if it helps people in any way, then I'm totally for it. Um, yeah, it's, it does not, it's not much trouble at all. Okay, I'm gonna actually, I should play the, the trailer if Judah Butler's Lover is still here. Uh, I'll play the trailer. So this, um, my game is available for, for wishlisting and there is a playable demo. You can, you don't need to uh, download the demo from Steam. It's also on itch.io. And it's also, you can download it direct from the site actually. I just put it on the, up on the site too if you want to do it that way. Um, yes, yeah, so I will shut the music down and I'm gonna put, play the trailer and after that, we are going to start back in on the EGA stuff. All right, here we go. Crimson, Ontario was once a prosperous, lively mining town. But that was a long time ago. Now it's quiet, nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. 
Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail of a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way. Or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS. Okie dokie, there we go. Oh, 32 picket, thank you for the bits. Thank you, thank you, yay. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're just, yeah, we're just gonna get started on the stuff. Put this back up. <laughs> Oh good, the trailer mouse me says, always reminds us of how, of how much we can't wait for the game. And Eden Wade says, uh, I'm, I might have mentioned better legibility and color contrast, working on accel accessibility for mobile apps has trained me to look at things like this and my eyesight isn't great. Yeah, I think I, I think you did mention um, a higher contrast stuff. And there's something else I want to put in the Crimson Diamond, which I haven't, I haven't implemented it yet, I haven't designed it yet. But do you know how on in Sierra games, I don't think they did it in LucasArts games, come to think of it. But in Sierra games, you know, if you do something and you get points, you, you know, like there's a sound that tells you that you got points. And that, you know, of course, like if when they used to have like the bar at the top, the, uh, that would tell you. Uh, <laughs> there was a bar at the top that would tell you how many points you got and stuff like that. Um, well, there's no there's no status bar across the Crimson Diamond. And I want there to be a cue that is not just audio for when you get points. Because right now in the demo, when you do something that's good or favorable for the progress of the game, you hear an audio cue. But let's say, you know, you don't have the music on or let's say, you know, you have hard, you're hard of hearing or any other reason why you wouldn't um, be able to notice that, that audio cue. I do want there to be a visual cue as well for a point. And I still haven't figured out what I want that to be yet. And that's kind of just been running in the back of my mind. Um, so if anyone has any good ideas for that, please let me know. <laughs> All right. And actually, yeah, come to think of it, Nightbot just gave um, the store the store app a link, the Steam store link for Strange Dungeons wish listing, which, of course, yeah, definitely, definitely check it out. It's, it's, Ilya has such a... A specific visual style. He's had the same visual style that's only been further developed as you know as uh, we've gone on from college, um, and I love the fact that he has this real distinctive voice in his stuff. And and it's going to be you know something hopefully super entertaining for people. Oh, it's time for tea. Says have a red diamond br appear briefly over Nancy's head. It's not a bad idea. Like some yes yeah, something right. I don't know. Like it maybe like like a sim. Like I was thinking like in the Sims it have like that green thing on top or something. <laughs> something that's really I was gonna I wanted something that would pop so something either in white or in yellow like something if you weren't even looking necessarily at the screen or if you're looking in one area of the screen if you saw like a pop of like bright white or yellow you would notice it like your eye would go to it a light bulb over the head yeah up to, between the borders says I don't rec recommend a screen flash but something like a portal effect or like a fade in out of a rotating diamond in the corner that's an interesting idea because I was just thinking of like a like a little star or something like a light bulb or something but it might be it might be better for it to be some kind of like a like a screen effect that is completely unmissable that's an interesting that's an interesting um, part. actually oh look my um my camera is all uh, blurry so I'm just trying to fix that for now Bill Coon says, before color film was common, photographers and movie directors only had black and white film, so they had to learn to see in black and white, so the end picture movie would look coherent to the audience. To put it another way, everyone in the audience was colorblind then. <laughs> I, I guess in EGA games are, are very, very specific in their limited color. Oh, okay, I think that fixed it. Yeah, I kind of wonder, I would, I, I kind of, I think I have seen, and I kind of do wonder about, like, seeing production photos, if they had color production photos of a black and white, black and white movies, because that is fascinating, because I always wonder what color the costumes are and stuff, right? And if they actually made it so that it was pleasing, or just the right shade of gray. Okie dokie, moving on. Oh, let's turn the, the sound back on, the music. And Photoshop. Great. Okay, good. It looks, yeah, it looks like the, the, 
this the captions are just rolling right along which is kind of nice okay this is where we were this is what we were left with and um mentioned before that the animation was this one of the fish coming into the bucket and that's what we're that's what we're upgrading right now in the introductory sequence Yes, Deluxe Text, I did see stuff like that where they could get cool visual effects by using brightly colored makeup on actors in black and white films. I have seen like that, that the, the witch, right? The witch's face changing and transforming because they would um, change the filter that was over the lens. That was super cool. I do remember that. Ah, Between the Borders says, black and white film had a completely different contrast than color too. Led to things like orange being used a lot just for contrast. That would be interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, so this is what we're going with. And so this is basically, like, that's the shot, right? Um, that we're, we're kind of uh, using as our guide. And this is all on separate layers. The fish here we have. Oh, wow. What happened to the fish? Oh, I don't want to auto-select layer. I just want to do that. There we go. So this is our fish. And it's just going to artfully dive itself in here. We were looking at potential solutions for making the fish stand out more, including some shadow. Rim light, shadow, all kinds of stuff. We weren't too sure. Um, there was a fish shadow we were experimenting with. Um, but we're going to have to see. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking about having a shadow like that to enhance, <laughs> enhance the contrast. Oh, always time for tea. This is the first time you've seen the new fish. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad, glad, glad you like it. Okay. All right. Um, so this was my um, guesstimate of what we wanted to do. Now, it doesn't have to go all the way in. It doesn't have to go all the way in. It just has to go in somewhat, and then we switch to another scene. It doesn't have a lot of... Um, frames of animation. So I figure it's going to come from here. Um, kind of figure out this. Yeah, I mean, maybe at this kind of a, this kind of an angle, it, we don't, we're not going to have to deform it or anything. It can just do this. And then we can switch to the next scene. That's probably the best deal um, in terms of time and not, not trying to animate this in any way. That can be the first first pass solution, and if we fi find that it needs a little bit something extra, we can look into maybe moving the fin a little bit, maybe wiggling a couple of the fins. Nothing too drastic. Ah yes, Deluxe Tux, thank you for linking the video of the special effect that they used um, the filters with on the face. Yeah. Yeah, Bill Kuhn, they do. They used um, different color makeup or something like that, like, and then they changed the the filter on the, the lens, as far as I recall. Uh, between the borders, I'm glad you. Yeah, I'm glad you like. You're liking how it's come along. Yes, auto select on the layer being default annoys you greatly. I I use it sometimes, but most of the time I do prefer it off. Okay, so let's let's try this. Um, so the first the first frame would be just just the bucket, like so. So we're going to do kind of like a, a, a rough pass at this animation. And then the next one would be fish. Actually, I just want to make sure I, I've got this at the, a good angle. Yeah, here. Okay. Two. And then maybe we can start exploring some of that idea for um, some shadow. So this one, actually, it's not going to be this necessarily. We're going to try another shadow. Oh, and Goldman Summer said they did similar effects in the 1931 Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as well. It's really cool. You know, what they were, what they were doing. So I'm trying to think about the light coming in. It's going to... It's kind of a hard thing to guess. I don't even know if I want to attempt it. 
Let's try it without any shadow first. Because I don't know. I'm not feeling confident in my ability to model this shadow. Oops. Oh, Ben Hur, nineteen twenty-five. Uh, Between the border says that's an amazing concept. Changing lights to affect to modify effects in camera, like the original lightsabers using, I think, retro reflectors like a road sign to glow without post production. Although they did post anyway. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of cleverness that was happening on the set of things. Oops. Uh, Mark Smith says the inside of the bucket blue. Then cyan sat better. Yeah, it, it's all it's all an exploration at this point. Um, we might. It's very possible that uh, we can go back to the cyan and then explore using sh some just easy, easy shadow. Yeah. So, let's just see what that kind of a roughed animation looks like. Uh, everyone's seen that Fred Astaire scene where he dances on the ceiling. That sort of thing still holds up today. I don't think I, I don't know if I've seen that. I mean, the the path of the fish is not that great right now, but you get the idea. And perhaps similar to like the dark side of the front of the bucket. Dark side of the front of the bucket. The blue, the blue dither. There probably has to be some kind of a shadow. I almost feel like I have to build a model of this or something, like a 3D model, and light it, and then track it. Oh, and Ben-Hur in 1925 had two, two Technicolor scenes. I didn't know that. Yeah, Bill Cunha, you're right. The greatest beauty of practical special effects is they can't age. Or at least they age much more gracefully. Where is time for TS? Is the music playing in the background from your game? It is not from the game, but this is the kind of... This was the stuff I was planning on using before I got Dan on, on, on the job. This is Canadian folk tunes done in done in MIDI. And so when I had Dan start to compose music for the Crimson Diamond, I sent him all this stuff and I said here, this is kind of what I'm kind of going for. Yeah, most miss, this is going to be a challenge, getting the colors and contrast to match. And the shadows. Yeah, between the borders, yeah. Practical effects, age, yeah, I, I think they just age better. And rockets on screen st strings are never good, but stuff like Savini's work will always hit the same level. Yeah, and, and you know, like so with sci-fi and even like with horror especially, I think, like having something practical is really, like, we respond to that stuff more viscerally. Okay, um, so. The first thing we're going to try... is yeah we're gonna try um just some shadow in the bucket as the fish is coming in that'll be the first thing so let's move the buck let's uh, move the fish back let's rewind uh and so oh shadows slot studio welcome welcome back good to see you yeah the lux tech says the best film ever made was fred ott's sneeze and it's been downhill from there sneeze i've never heard of that one so let's see here. So just gray? How do we feel about just gray? It's not gonna work, is it? No, it has to be it can't just be gray. Well, two color technicolor is fascinating goal on summit. Says it was only red and green, so those two colors dominate the palette. It's really effective in Dr. X those hazy green skies. Huh. Ah, Bilkin says, I've had moments watching before CGI movies and TV where I can't figure out how they did the special effect without using CGI. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's really, it's like, it's like being a magician, you know? Oops. 
I feel like the shadow would be coming down the slope though, right? This is going to be a pain, I can already tell. Because it's a sloped surface. Mm. Idiocracy, good to see you! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the most beautiful fish in bucket I've witnessed! What glorious EGR, EGA art! Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, we're just trying to fake our way through some uh, we're trying to fake our way through some um, some shadows here because I really don't want to face the music and have to model this in like blender or something and then come back and so I can accurately reflect what the, what the shadows look like oh cool the deluxe text says it's literally a shot of some dude named Frank Ott sneezing. It was an Edison kinetoscope recording shot in 1894. Bokin says Frank Ott sneezes, the first motion picture ever recorded. He was an employee of Thomas Edison. They had him sit down and sneeze in front of the movie camera. The movie's only about three seconds long. Up between the border says, excuse me if I'm behind the times here, but if you if you made a path, could you use it as a construction line? construction line to get a smooth curve for the animation. If you made a path, could you use it as a construction line? Um, like just like drew a path as an on a separate layer and just follow that path? Yeah, I think so. If that's what you mean between the borders. You know, always time for D says my friend and I can't figure out how they did the Battle of Hoth in Empire Strikes Back in nineteen eighty one. Oh, there's some really good information out there. A lot of uh, it's, uh, not all of it's well documented, but there's some stuff about what you know how they got some of that stuff to work. Yes, yeah, so that studio. The dark blue looks pretty good, even if it's not ultra realistic. It's good enough of it feels right. Yeah, my my that's what I'm kind of going for. Is does this feel right? That's that's kind of the the standard that I'm operating under. Yeah, between the borders says most of IL, IL, ILM's older work was a model on a stand, then they moved the camera, then comp composited them. Yeah, and I think they used like baking soda or some other type of fine powder for the, for the snow. Oh, node, okay, between the, between the borders, node based splines that generate a smooth curve. You know what? Probably. <laughs> um, but I actually. Um, I think at this resolution, I, I'm actually not really a big fan of smooth animation, I, and that might sound really funny, but um, if something is if something moves too smoothly, it kind of makes makes me feel like it looks weird. So, I'm actually going to save this location of this fish with this shadow. So this is uh, one. Uh, animation one. Yeah! <laughs> Between the borders says, Hibernaculum runs at 8 frames per second, I get it. Yeah, I, I don't know, there's something about yeah, the extra smoothness sometimes I even even when it comes to movies, right? When we're speaking of movies, uh, 60 frames per second, I saw The Hobbit in 60 frames per second and it got all weird in some parts, like when the camera was moving, panning across. It's super bizarre. <laughs> it doesn't feel right, you know, to me anyway. <laughs> Judith Butler's lover, not if it's really fast and complex movement. I mean, fight scenes are dance, not fish going into buckets. So that's the animation one. So that's the first one here. Yeah, always time for tea. Oh, the game filters. Often modern consoles have a smooth filter, which makes things look like they have a layer of vastly and like the old pixels in all their glory. Yeah, and also um, TVs have that motion smoothing for watching sports. And it's extremely frustrating to me when people watch a show like Game of Thrones or something with motion smoothing on because it just looks horrendous. And some people don't seem to notice. <laughs> So yeah, sometimes too smooth is is not um, not my favorite. All 
Ah, Moss Miss says, I got used to it in the 60 FPS and everything now. And the Lux says, I don't understand frame rate snobbiness that some gamers have. Yeah, I don't know anything about frame rates in terms of gaming at all. Because <laughs> I, you know, like this kind of stuff I play. And everyone else here plays, I'm assuming. We just kind of... <laughs> Like, is it really a thing um, for people playing stuff? Oh, wow. I didn't want to do that. Is that... Yeah. That isn't, like, multiplayer? I mean, as long as it's not choppy, I would assume it's okay. Okay. Between the Borders says, Yeah, especially for people like me who grew up with 24 FPS being professional film and 60 FPS interlaced being BBC low-budget whatever's. Yeah, motion smoothing, yeah, I, uh, like, it's fine, I'm sure, like, uh, like, when it's used for, like, stuff like sports and stuff, I'm sure it's really good, but, yeah, like, watching a show with it on is, like, it really, it kind of is a disaster to me. Because <laughs> you know what, when you really think about it, when our, when you move your hand across a camera, or, like, when you move your hand across your face like this, it blurs just so of course you know when something doesn't act that way <laughs> when you're watching it it's gonna feel funny or it can feel funny yeah <laughs> i always time for the guiltiest charges the two games i'm playing now are 1992 and 1994. yeah like uh rise of the dragon is 1990 and it's the most recent adventure game that i've let's played on my channel so far everything else was from 1989 so yeah yeah Actually, let's try this. As long as it feels okay, that's all we're looking for here. So this is just still super, whoop, super rough. No, stop it. Oh, I, I haven't saved this yet. Uh, Delux, the Deluxe Talk says, I've been waiting for a good chance to start Lost in Play, which just came out. Lost in Play? I don't know that one. That sounds interesting. Uh, Slash Studio says, seems like likely this will be the last bucket stream. Any idea what is next? Yeah, absolutely. Slash Studio. I was just re-watching the introductory sequence for the game. And it seems like now I'm kind of filling out like the very first shots. And so the next one will be... Um, so after this shot is like the one we've already done. The night scene of the fisherman gutting the fish. And then there's the close-up of the, the diamond tumbling out of the belly. And that's kind of the, what's going to happen next, I think. So it's another close-up fish shot. Ooh, Between the Border says, One of the nice things about building our own engine is we can get pixel-perfect results without fighting the built-in scaling processing. That, that's amazing Between the Borders, because that's something, yeah, I, something, I do have a pet peeve, yeah, with, with pixel art sometimes, is that if it's not, like, pixel-perfect, you know, I think of something like a Stardew Valley, where if there's, like, slanted line, it, they just kind of slant, like, it... <laughs> It, it you know they kind of bend the stuff and it, I feel makes me feel funny. I mean it's, I don't hate it. Well I kind of do, but it's not like a big deal or anything. Yeah, the face close up will be the one that's after the fish gutting one. So they, they so I mean yeah those hopefully won't take too long because there's no background in them. They're just like black and then just a the fish, and or just the the guy. So I'm hoping the next one won't take too long. Yeah, Mixels, but that Blaholton, is that what they're called? When you kind of got like the in between -y, in between pixel art stuff? Uh oh. The Lux Tech says the fish guards are going to push Pim Snyderman into an ESRB M rating if you aren't careful. 
So let's just do this. Uh, I, yeah, I should have done this arc better. I'm not gonna. Oh, yeah. Well, Hudson says, I figure if you're going to break the grid at all, you got to do it all over. Make it a consistent part of the look and not just a convenient solution sometimes. You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I can kind of get it. People need to do it. But yeah, it kind of does visually. It just, you know, it's almost like um, when you have like furniture set up or, like, and you've got a coffee table and you've got a book set on the coffee table and it's kind of slanted to the side a little bit. Like you just want to square it up or something. I don't know. Is that just me? And we can also do this, a practice of this with the shadow, um, but without the blued in interior of the bucket. We can try that as well. Ah, between the border says, I worked hard to get integer pixel scaling from 720p through 4K. The text is always screen resolution. It's just easier to read. Retroize, remember it not as it was. Yes, that's something I, I think we talked about this la uh, last stream or the stream before that um, that's kind of the one consideration I was making in terms of um, making making the resolution for the Crimson Diamond. So it's kind of thinking about making it instead of 320 by 200, making it um, 720 by 400, but keeping my, my pixel, pixels as they are, but just making the text, you know, extra, not, like extra smooth with the double resolution, but then making everything out like the artwork as I have it. Now, that was something I was thinking about. Because, yeah, a pixel pixel um, fonts uh, can be challenging. And, yeah, I think that's very much like the, the philosophy um, is as we remember it, for sure. Just like with uh, just the games in general, even. I've been watching Robot Spacers, like his... Uh, his VODs uh, of his play of Degraf Amon Ra. And I love the game. You know, he loves the game. Everyone loves the game. But when you actually try to make sense of what's going on in the story, logically, it, a lot of it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. And, and so I'm really trying to be mindful of that when I'm making my own stuff. Uh, Belkin says, last month someone on YouTube uploaded a video of a 3D FPS style build they did of a Colonel's Book Quest in, t in 2014. Hope they kept the files and can make them available. Ooh, oh, I didn't see that. I'm going to just open that briefly. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't see this. That's great. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so move fish in a little bit more. I wonder if I should make the fish look like it's kind of hit the side of the bucket and then go down. Or just do it a smooth slide in there. Or what? Hmm. It's like a weird pixel in there that's...
What is with that one pixel? There's a one pixel that seems to be showing the fish. It's this one. What is going on? It's supposed to be green. Okay, it's supposed to be green. And it is... Where'd it go? Okay, it's that one. It's this one. Why is it doing that? <sighs> this one? No, it was this one. Okay. This one. Okay. Fish. Okay, good. I fixed it. Weird. Okay. Oh, rubble pixel, yes. You're hitting the side without the bucket moving or the fish body showing impact. Yeah, I might, um, yeah. I, the fish cannot be rotated. Um, well, let's see what happens if we do rotate the fish. I think it yeah, it'll all, it'll kind of get broken up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it gets all kind of um, not sharp looking. So what I probably will do when I actually do this for real is like just make it so that it slides in uninterrupted without hitting anything. Yeah, so this, this angle of approach is too shallow. Uh... But um, let's just finish it off as just as, as a as just a sample animation. So yeah, there. Okay. Hopefully we don't have any other strange pixels. Alright. And then after that we can easily generate, um, actually not easily generate, I could have, I could have been smarter about this. We could have generate, can generate one that's just got the um, cyan. Maybe one more. Okay, fish shadow. And then move fish. Move fish. There, and then that would kind of be where he ends up. There. Oh, see, he's coming out a little bit on the side here. Okay. Get back there. Okay. And we'll see how that turns up, turns out. And then also, so, you know, and when I do this um, for real, I will be f changing, I'll, f I'll change the flap of the, the fins a little bit too. Um, and maybe there'll be some water splash, because that will be easy enough to do. And then, so all that hocus pocus will detract from the fact that, this, that the movement is a little wonky and the shadow doesn't really work. It's all magic. It's in-camera magic.
Because it has doesn't have to be correct, as the slash studio says. It just has to look right. Um, and that's the luxury afforded us at this resolution. We can we can get away with stuff, you guys, using hocus pocus. <laughs> I think you're always time for teases. I think you're your own harshest critic. It looks fine to me. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I I do think I am, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? Everything can be a good thing. Everything can be a bad thing. Groben Josh, good to see you. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Happy Crimson Katoos Day to you. So yeah, it looks like uh, this... I don't think we're going to quite finish this piece tonight. Because, I mean, I do want to add some Hocus Pocus. But... Um, It looks like, um, judging by, oops, judging by anything, um, from, from what my impression is of Rise of the Dragon, I might be looking for another game to let's play sooner rather than later. So, um, that's something I need to consider. Uh, and I do have, I wrote down your suggestions, finally, in this book. Um, I'm hoping for another EGA adventure game, and, and from a studio, hopefully, that I haven't seen yet. Murder Hill from 1987, River Hill Soft Japan might be the might be the next one. Apparently Cruise for a Corpse might have an EGA version you guys said last time, so I might try to track that down. Next game nominations Earthrise 1990. Bilkin, is that not, is that uh is that EGA? I will write that down. Earth Rise. 1990. Between the Borders. Um, a Rise of the Dragon, we did, we successfully wiretapped Johnny Kwong's phone um, and we gave a, a, calli cal a scroll of calligraphy to the old Asian guy. I can't remember his name. And he gave us a bunch of loot. He gave us a flak jacket and he gave us um, a fortune cookie and he gave us an agate. Which is kind of cool because it's a mineral. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I can't remember if he gave us anything else. But yeah, so, apparently we're reaching that end game stage where you can lose. So we'll see. Okay, how does this look? Oh, Mousemus says, uh, Cruise for Corpse. Got Cruise for Corpse running an EGA. Not the best looks, unfortunately. 32 color version is better. Bill Coon says, Earthrise is an EGA, not to be confused with another game of the same name from 2007. Interesting, and it's an adventure game, Bill Coon. I am, I am intrigued. Yes, and between the borders, yes, you warned me about the fail state, potential fail state. Um, and Earth, yeah, and Cruise for a Corpse. If it's even if it doesn't look great in EGA, it'd be really nice to play. Uh, what are they called again? What um, studio did that? It's not Psygnosis. Who did um, Cruise for a Corpse? Delphine. Thank you. Um, I've not played a Delphine game yet, so I would be willing to give that a shot. Uh, always time for Tisa. It might be not your cup, might not be your cup of tea. Original Wasteland is, is Original Wasteland R more RPG or is or is it quite adventure? -y? Yeah, that basically works. I mean, it works enough for me. And now we're gonna add all the bells and whistles. I, I've never played a Delph Delphine or Delphine game. So I am intrigued enough to... Okay, Wasteland hard to define. Because I have... I did play it. Like, when Wasteland 2 came out, I think I bought or also got uh, Wasteland the original. And you can turn off the filtering so that you get that pixel, the nice chunky pixels. And it's it's difficult because I don't think you can use a mouse with it and you have to kind of figure out the keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, I think Goma Summer, yeah, I think this basically works. Um, so now we're going to do all the extra bits and, and make this nicer. 
Okay, Deluxe Stars couldn't get into Wasteland. Yeah, Bill says Wasteland a bit more C CRPG than Adventure Game, I think. I love the art in Wasteland. Don't get me wrong, I love it. Oh, oh my gosh. Between the border shows, I was in a stream today with a guy who tried streaming Wasteland and couldn't make it stream fun. Ah, yeah, I can, I can believe that. Because that game does look challenging. Yeah, so I think this is this is fairly good. So you know what? I'm going to save just this folder. Um, in here, and I'm just going to call it Fish Nice Animation. And just the, as the PSD, I'm not going to I'm not I'm not going I'm not going to export this or anything. Just so I have it. It's a great game, but it's a slow burn. Gotcha. All right, so that's that. So that's what we have. So you know, in comparison to you know this one, I think that's an acceptable right where it started, where, how it's going, or whatever that meme is. Okay, so we're going to do the fun stuff. First thing we're going to do. Uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna animate some some nice fin twitching, some fin twitching. First things first. We're gonna pop the fish out completely from behind everything. Okay. And we're going to animate some fins. Yeah, <laughs> the ultimate before and after shots. Yes. Yeah, so we're not. We're not there yet. We're gonna do some razzle dazzle. We're gonna razzle dazzle the fish. So we're gonna do. Upper fin animation one. Okay, so. Hmm. We can't do it like this, I just realized. The body of the fish. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? Because we're gonna do we're actually gonna start flattening some layers. We're gonna duplicate our working fish. So we're gonna call this working. In case we need to go back into some of these and tease these these layers back apart again, we will have them. Um and I'm going to stick this up at the top here where I'm not going to mess with it. This fish folder is going to be... We're going to merge a lot of the fish together because we're going to be doing... Um, yeah, we're going to get rid of all this stuff because I feel like it holds up without this stuff. We're going to do a lot of... We're going to merge our fish. Okay. So here's our fish. Oh, turn off. Shadow. Okay. Okay. So we we merged fish. So we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna start animating fish. Fish one. Duplicate. Fish two. <laughs> Razzle dazzle the fish with group here. Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Fish nice animation. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Uh, you know, yes, you, you know how I, I name things and organize myself for lack of organization. Okay. Between the Borders says, Oh, Wasteland is like like Wizardry and other... I'm playing a spreadsheet-style games. Everything really needs to be considered and it takes forever. Yeah. Yeah, I like adventure games because they're pretty, um, like, low... Low deliberation. <laughs> yeah, so the, yeah, the fish is actually going into root beer. Yeah, working fish. Sounds like a little git into your working files. Yeah, work the working fish. So this is fish one. This is fish two. Fish two um, is gonna flap. So this is the actual mid. This is mid fish. So this is actually probably gonna be fish. This is probably fish two. Fish one will be. Um, this 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 is gonna be. Um, shrunk down a little bit. So there's gonna be a three. It's gonna kind of open up and close. Oh yeah, Bill, can I saw that. Um, someone released a randomizer a few days ago for Quest for Glory EGA. So I didn't really look too much into this, into what that actually means. But does that mean just a randomly generated character and you just, you just play it? Oh, anyway, it says all graphic designers name their files like that. That's where the memes come from. Okay, Between the Borders says, I've been overthinking this and have a migraine incoming. Oh dear. I uh, hope you can take care of that before it gets too bad. I think you're between a half and two thirds of the way through Return or uh, Rise of the Dragon. Like I said, I have trouble remembering going through that game without knowing the next step. Mm hmm. I will see. I'm enjoying it, so the longer it goes, the better. Deluxe Tech says I might get into those real hardcore CRPGs if I was stranded on a desert island with one, but whenever I try one, I realize quickly that I got like chores and errands to do. Oh, okay. Bill Coon says the randomized stuff in Quest of Glory One is a placement of the items in the game and some abilities. 
Yeah, that's a thing, like, um... Oops. There, there's just, there's a lot... There, there's a lot of, you know, time you need to invest into an RPG. And I love RPGs, it's my second favorite genre after... After, um... Adventure, but yeah, they just... They require a lot of time and they're super rewarding, you know? Um, I'm gonna do a transform. I'm gonna do a skew and then, I'm, then I'll clean it up. Or warp? Warp? Maybe a warp. That's too subtle. That's too subtle. I'm going to do that again, but do more. Uh, actually, let's try skew. That's better. Drill says, I can't wait for a quest for two randomizer. Then not only can the items be randomized, but also the location of shops and homes in Shapir and the shapes of the streets in Shapir. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, wow, the, yeah, the, 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 the streets in Shapir. My goodness. It's not, it's not my favorite thing about that game. It's amazing what people can do after the fact. I almost wish there was like an adventure game that was just the break in houses. <laughs> Between the borders says my class names are a mess. I need to refactor eventually. I have a class called Actual Door to differentiate to differentiate it from door definition. And I'm not sure why anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've got something that's straight up named completely the wrong thing because um, I forgot, I, I I'd copied and pasted something to because I wanted to use something very similar and then I just didn't end up renaming it and now it's just programmed in with completely the wrong name and I just, I don't want to fix it because I don't want to break anything. So, yeah. Oh, Bill can just I want an all breaking game too. I'm not alone. Oh, Maximus transforms in EGA seem not that bad. You're impressed? Um I would never like just rely on that. Like there you still need to clean up a lot before I, I would be like feel comfortable. So it's not like it's it's definitely See, that almost changed too too much. Hold on. Why didn't that... What? Oh, wait. Didn't do that right. It's this one. Oh, wait. Okay, wait a second. I know what I did. So that was the original. I, I'm getting confused already. Okay, that's the original. This is this, is this one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. 
<sighs> These are like two pixels I need to add back. Okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Deluxe Sex says, there's that game Neighbors from Hell that might tickle your fancy. Ooh, I'm going to write this down. <laughs> oh no! Slash Studio, I broke an entire feature being lazy with variable names. I can't tell you how long it took me to realize one variable was actually doing double duty. Oh no! <laughs> uh, between the borders, barely avoided that yesterday. Also managed to wonder why my change didn't take effect when I failed to save the source file. Or edit a resource in the wrong directory. Oh my goodness. Yeah, sometimes things like duplicate. I'm like, why? Why, why is this happening twice? I, you know, I don't know why this is happening twice. So this... So that's that's that and that's that. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish one, fish two. That doesn't really look like it's moving. The fin doesn't. No, it's not. It's more. It has to stay rounded. It's not rounded. Let's see. Anyways, I think AGI game engine often reused variables and flags across the game. I imagine someone would have to be very careful in use of those. I know, yeah, I know in the uh, the text parser they they definitely cut some corners. They're not cut corners, but they had to make it so that um, things would work and be efficient. Ooh, wow! Limited to two hundred fifty six variables and flags across the whole game. Oops. That's true, Slash Studio. Don't judge the animation too harshly until you see it in context. Sometimes it looks wrong in the vacuum, but it looks good in context. Always time for tea. Thank you so much for dropping by and, and um, having having the chance to, to, to come hang out with us. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs> Have a great night. It was really nice to see you and nice to chat with you. Ah... Between the Borders says, I love seeing those tricks in games on limited hardware. One that strings to mind is Final Fantasy VI, where the limited number of characters means they're actually rewritten after throwaway characters are used in early game. That's why Salus could be a Moogle. Evil Tentacle, good to see you. Evil Tentacle, there are, um... There are two new emojis uh, for subs, just to let you know. Yeah, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you beat me, almost beat me to it. <laughs> you use them so many times now they're chats. <laughs> nice. Okay, good. I'm glad you know. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do three I'm gonna do three um I'm gonna do three three actually yeah, there needs to be more gray in this area. But yeah, I'm gonna do three versions of this fin. Maybe I only need two. What if I just do two for all of them and see if that's enough? I'm glad to hear you're using them in other chats. That's great, Evil Tentacle. <laughs> Fish is looking great, thank you. Yeah, I um, I kind of um, put together just a really quick 
like a, an attempt at doing the fish this is without the, the special like fins like i'm doing fins right now and water's gonna come off here and there um, but that's the general idea for this and of course this is this is the original that's in the demo currently so we're getting there we're getting there uh, but yeah this is oh this guy Sakana Kao, good to see you. Sakana Kao, perfect name for this, of course. Fish face. I never dreamed a fish would go into the bucket. Yes. I know, it's, 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 uh... That's pretty good. I might, I might, um, do the tail more. So why don't we just leave this as it is for now? Uh, and, uh, so what I'd like to do is... For each, ver actually this is probably, I probably should only do two versions of the fin because what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take this fish and do a version of the tail um, and then do the other version of the fish and copy that version of the tail. If you see what I mean. Yes, achievement unlocked, fish made it into bucket. Yeah, and hopefully I can add a fish emote at some point too. That's kind of the dream. So this one, so let's um, deal with this, this, uh, the tail. Oh man. Okay. Tail. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to just take this whole thing. Okay. And we're going to just mess with it just a little bit. Maybe even this part, we could even rotate a little. <laughs> I need a fish, at least a fish head. Yeah, like that one, except my fish. So yeah, if we are to just do this with it, it kind of does get all kind of fuzzy. But, you know, that's what we're here to fix. Um, and I'm actually going to use this one as a guide to remaking this one at this new look, at this new orientation. Filling in, clean up some of these strays. <laughs> Deluxe Tech says, Cartoons lied to me. They told me cats carried fish heads with a skeleton attached, and I have never seen this happen in real life. Uh, yeah, I know. I love that, actually. I love, I love that um, particular cat look. I know exactly what you mean. The perfect, perfect um, fish skeleton with the head and the tail. Judith Butler's Lover, good to see you. Um, I hope you got to catch the trailer. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday um, and have a good night. Good night. It's always good to see you. up a little bit they don't all have to join I like looking at the one I had as a reference because they don't all really have to join how are those AIs with them um, with pixel art by the way are they good at like doing this <laughs> and making it so that it's not um, all crunchy
Picture life surprisingly not too bad. Interesting. Like with limited palette as well? Because I was thinking, ooh, I wonder if it's good at like... I wonder if it's good at EGA. Of course that's what I thought. That's all I, that's all I think about. Hmm. Oh, did I move? I moved the fish down too. Well, that's not going to be helpful. Yeah. One moment. Here. Not sure. Perhaps it will understand EGA eventually. Slash Studio says, AI is probably really good at mixing cool colors with limited palette, but I'm not saying that from having seen anything. Yeah. Okay, so I need to add... Um, I need to... You know, I need to add scale up there and the lighting on the top. Alright. Oh, interesting. Between the borders says, IntelliSense is about 25% helpful for programming. It's not much, but it's occasionally a pleasant surprise. Huh. IntelliSense, I'm assuming, is some kind of programming AI? <laughs> Second of course, occasionally a pleasant surprise, occasionally an unpleasant hang or crash. Ah, Slash Studio says, unless Carl is actually an AI robot, I just don't know it, in which case it's doing real, it's doing great work. Yeah. Carl is amazing. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm that, what was it, like a post office or something that, that uh, was on the, on the Twitter? Amazing. <laughs> and using SCI Companion, no less. Sometimes it's gold, sometimes it's sabotage. IntelliSense. IntelliSense is Visual Studio Visual Studio's code analysis tool. Sometimes it makes it really easy to find how variables use or it can suggest the right thing to use as you're typing. Ooh. I've seen it cat eating ways as I've seen cat only only seen cats drop a severed mouse head in the middle of the living room. So someone can step on it. Oh dear. Okay. IntelliSense, but between the borders says Microsoft Auto Code Complete. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's try that. Actually, that doesn't quite... Yeah. Okay, second so is it kind of just kind of runs automatically IntelliSense does, gathering information while you work. Usually benign, occasionally very helpful, and more rarely it goes off the rails and blocks down the CPU. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's how things start. Where's the... How can I... How am I... Why am I having such a hard time with this? <laughs> there it is. Okay. Yeah, that works. It's fine. Uh, I'm... Actually, I might... Clean it up just a little bit. 
Okay, it can between the borders it can suggest templates, do things like, oh, you just looped through X in a two-dimensional array, do you want to do Y? Or you've made start time, did you want to make an end time too? Yeah. <laughs> they took your oh yeah. I was about to say that sounds like something Clippy would say. <laughs> anyway, it says, we're starting to name a variable. You you are starting to name a variable. Should we complete it to something you didn't want? <laughs> Aw, sorry, Clippy. I've got some pieces of paper you can hold together. To hold together, Eden Way says. Aw, poor little guy. I feel like... I feel like... Probably the fish tail would be flopping the most, so I probably want to do another one. So let's do another one. Yeah, we'll do another one. So this would actually be... Fish zero. Because this will be the... The original fish is the midline, the mid... The middle middle frame and everything else is going to be deviations on either end so all right oh he must me says cruise for a corp Corpse EGA is hard to find online. Here's my screenshot. Why is everything so hard to find online in EGA? It's like a conspiracy. Screenshot. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the screenshot. Yeah, it looks kind of rough. I still kind of want to, though. Is it a good game? He looks downscaled from the 32 color version, which looks great, by the way. Mm. 32 color. I've been trying to do EGA and stick with it, so I kind of feel like... Hmm. Hmm. Hard to find. Oh, man. Um... Are there any other Delphine um, adventure games that are in EGA that I could try to play that are easier to locate? <laughs> the whole time. Hey, 32 is too many color. <laughs> Slash Studio says there's a VGA conspiracy against EGA because they're jealous of its 16 color supremacy. Yeah, I mean, why is it so hard? Everything has been a struggle to get an EGA. Except for a personal nightmare wasn't hard. But... Uh, but um, Last Crusade was difficult to get, and Rise of the Dragon was also very difficult to get. Certainly, you know, it wasn't something I found, like, online. Someone actually had to help me out. So, why? Why? You know, and of course, no, you know, we don't even need to talk about LucasArts and their refusal to provide EGA versions of, you know, Loom and everything else bmd nerd good to see you welcome welcome back has a game of the point and click persuasion ever made you sad enough to cry i'm gonna have to think about that one uh mass miss uh, i don't think it was an eg version of the future future was unfortunately that game is super hard anyway does that game ever made me cry it, like like not in frustration <laughs> You mean like being like emotionally affected by it and not frustrated. Um, huh. 
I, I don't think I, I don't think I cried, but I think I was sad at the end of King's Quest V because I thought that was the last King's Quest game. Little did I know. But I, I think I might have been sad at that time. Uh, what else? Of course, there's that, you know, in Quest of Glory 4, there's the whole, the big hairy monster thing. That, you know, that was very sweet. I don't know if I was going to start crying from it, but it was emotionally affecting. And just Iranus peace in general, and just having that as a location that is kind of common through the games I've always really liked. And that feeling of when you're in the woods or whatever in a Quest for Glory game and you're running and you're, you're, you're almost out of health and you're going to die and you finally make it to Aranus Peace, that feels really nice. Yeah, <laughs> not angry tears, BMD. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hmm. You know, between the borders says probably a scarcity of original EGA version sold combined with less appeal for gamers. You're really looking at con con conservationalists. What I said, conversationalists. Most people didn't care much for game preservation until sadly recently. Yeah. Ah oh, well. Think of something. It is too bad because, yeah, this I just, you know, me. I love the EGA. Aw, Between the Borders says, like all my family's original PC Junior games, Wolfenstein, etc., probably got trashed 20 to 30 years ago. Yeah. <sighs> That's how it goes. I think we, yeah, we all have stories like that. Flukas, happy Crimson Katoos Day. Good to see you. Yeah, we're just um, animating our fish here with a few um, tail flaps and um, fin flaps. This is where it, outside here gets a little bit steppy. I mean, I don't know if we're going to completely finish this today because I, I need to actually do the animation and because I need to, I want to move, I want to animate pretty much all these fins, not the eye, but the, all the fins and also want to add some water droplets and stuff. So I might not finish this completely today. It could be another, another week. But uh, it's 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 pretty it's it's moving pretty smoothly. I'm not really getting stuck. Oh, didn't want to give them a bad rap. Some of the EGA screens increased for a corpse are decent. Let's take a look. That's pretty nice. Ooh, I quite like that. Yeah, you're right. That's a nice one. Ooh, I like the, the dark cyan on the side of the boat. That's fantastic. Yeah. I suppose this, this is as good a time as any to ask if any one of you as an EGA version of Cruise for a Corpse that um, I can play on stream.
because it does look very excellent. I mean, some of the screens, yeah, look better than others, but even with, with Rise of the Dragon, you could see parts where they kind of, you know, didn't really finish things off perfectly in terms of what the stray pixels and extra colors. Ah, stop it. Why? Don't come up. Oh, what is this? No, MSM. No, I don't want. Mm -hmm. All right, let's check out my third, my third fin position. So it's going to go before this one. Yeah, I'm pretty con I'm pretty convinced. Um, hold on. Yeah, that's all probably fine. All right, so we have three. Uh, was fish zero, fish one. Okay, so we have three three. Fish tail positions, uh, two fish fin positions here. Now I'm gonna just do. Okay, hold on. I know I know. Mark these properly. Fish tail. This is gonna be a disaster. I can't even believe that um, the very first shot in the intro with the fisherman who fishes the fish out of the river. I can't believe that worked. I, it was a mess. Cause cause the way I. I because we're moving this fish all together, so I need to I can't just put these all on separate layers because it's it won't they won't hold together. This is tail two. This is tail one. And this tail one, tail two. And this is okay, this is tail <laughs> This is tail two. Tail two. This is fin two. This is oh, this this is fin one, right? Hold on. Yeah, this is fin one. This is fin two. Tail two. Yes. Okay. This is fin. This is fin one. Tail two. This is fin two. No wait. This is fin one. No, this is fin. Okay, this is fin one. This is fin two. Yeah. Fin two, tail two. This is also fin two. No wait. Fin one. Fin okay, this is fin one. This is now this is fin one. This one is fin one. <sighs> okay. In third fin position like the fish of dancing valley, exactly. Oh, my dear Mike, good to see you. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, the fish looks so much better than two weeks ago. Shading on the fins is perfect. It looks like there's way more color than just the EGA palette. I appreciate it. Yeah, this the fish. This fish is actually light cyan, dark cyan, and gray for the most part. Of course, there's a bit of white and a bit of magenta. So it's a five color fish. Uh, so that's fin one, fin one, fin one. Okay, and this is fin two. That's fin two. That's the regular fin. Okay, so. Fin one, fin one. So I need a fin two, tail two, and a fin two, uh, tail three. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out later, is what I say. Okay, uh, the next fin we're going to do is the little bottom fin. And these are, these are going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Actually, it's okay because a fish that's out of water that's going into a bucket is not going to move smoothly and predictably. It's going to do all kinds of weird twitchy stuff, right? Bottom fin two. Okay. 
So this fin is going to go in more. And there's one, two, three, there's about four rays to it. And I'm just going to, because there's not a lot in, in, in it, this one, so I'm just going to do it by hand. In fact, it's probably just going to get crushed in. So that one's only going to have two movements. Hmm. How's that? Just to preview this again. There it is. How's that look? Uh, too, it's too clean looking. Okay. In half an hour or so, we're going to move on to continuation of Rise of the Dragon. This has to get more crushed looking, not as clean. quite yet. <laughs> every time, why do I have to do this every time? Here it is. Dual names! Happy Crimson Good Tuesday! Good to see you! Good to see you! Yeah, we're just, uh, we're doing a... We're doing a nice, um... We're doing some animation to our fish. And, um, yeah, there are some new... There's some new, um, emotes. So I'm just showing you that. Where's the one? Oh, there she is. Golden Drake! Good to see you! Yeah, I'm wondering if the eating one is still too subtle. I might have to replace that with something more effective. Uh, next, next fin we're going to work on. Is this one. I'm just, I'm kind of making it all like a mess. And I'm hoping it's just going to work out. Because I'm not really tracking this, so, this, so many different things happening. With this belly fin too. Oh no! Heads up, the bucket and frame link in Nightbot is still broken. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, okay, hold on. Do, do, do. Okay, give me a second. I'm. Oh wow, why is my chroma key lock not looking that good? Do I need to make this brighter? Hold on, I can make this light brighter. Hmm. Okay, I will take a quick look at it. So these are still broken. Darn it. That one's fine. This one. Okay, the second one doesn't work. What? Okay, I will fix really quick. That one is... Glory to the EGA bucket. Okay. Society 6. Okay. Glory to the EGA bucket. Bucket. Society 6. Okay. That's not doing it. Okay. Hold on. I'll just go to my Society 6 page. Give me a second. I think the, the link is partly duplicated. Okay. Let me get into my night bot. Okay. 
Okay, that'll try to fix. Okay. Right. Timers. Okay. Uh, buckets. Edit. Okay, so. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. I'm going to try that one. Okay. Submit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Manure Mike. I appreciate it. Um, commands. Custom. And this one is... Oh. Bucket in frame. Oh, is that one okay? Wait a second. Okay, it might... One might be okay. <laughs> well, BMD nerd, you got a Torrens Passage pick from Society6. That's very... Odd. But does that one work? Yes. Okay. So that one works. Now does the timer one. The timer one. And I just I think the timed the timed bucket the timed bucket link wasn't working, but I think Oh yeah, I hold on, it's still not working. Hold on. Bucket T shirt. Okay, submit. I think it's fixed now. I think. Thank you, thank you. We'll just we'll take a look. I'll keep that minimized. Okay. We'll wait and see on that. Okay, so fish. Fish belly fin. I was gonna change the belly fin. Using this as my guide. What I'm gonna eventually do is I'm gonna just randomly um, copy paste them on different frames and so it'll just kind of be moving erratically so this will be coming out this way Okay, two different shirts of the bucket. Thank you so much, Minor Mike, for checking. I really, really, yeah, appreciate it. I should check all that stuff, and I just drop the ball. I'm just eyeballing. We'll see how badly I've eyeballed this. Really soon. I should just shift everything so that I don't have to keep moving this fish. I won't though. Yeah, that's not working. I gotta move that down more.
this is just do this. <laughs> okay, they found the guy who made the torrent's passenger. He did a bunch of other point and clicks. Interesting. Point clicking. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cute. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> oh, I really like the uh, full throttle one, the first one there. Is this even moving any appreciably at all? I think I need to do more. It'll all be worth it. It'll all be worth it. try that. I feel like I didn't, I still didn't do enough to differentiate them. Yep. Looks like we're gonna have at least one more, one more stream with our fish before we're finished with them. That's not bad. She needs to be a little... It needs to be a little, um, not as filled in the top here. Okay. Hmm. I better. Except, so want that one pixel back. Yeah. And actually more, more of a shadow. <laughs> Lucas, thank you. Well, this fish is very expressive and emotive. One could almost say it's animated. Hey. <laughs> it's not going to be as complicated as the river, the river one. Thank goodness. This almost looks like the same that I just... Did I... I never... S I'm not moving these lines enough. This is, yeah, this is as animated as, as I get, pretty much. 
something that is easy enough to do. Not very many, not very many frames really. Oh, there's no music? Massimus? I'm hearing music. You guys aren't hearing music? Well, at least the captions are still working. Okay, Joe is here for you. Hi, good to see you. You can hear music. Guess it's pretty quiet. Okay, I can, I can, I can make that more. I can boost up music. Um, you hope you're hearing music between the borders? I think you are. Can you hear the music? It's just light? Okay, I will... There. Um, put it up a little bit more. My gosh. It would be bad if we weren't playing it. I've been hearing it this whole time. <laughs> BMD Nerd asks, What is your favorite PNC genre? Mine is medieval, but every game that comes out now is sci-fi. Um, I like mysteries. <laughs> I guess that's really unoriginal of me to say, but I do. It's like my favorite. I like mystery adventure games. Um, but I also really like, um, my first, my first real, like, adventure game thing was, like, King's Quest, so, like, I guess fantasy? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not huge on sci-fi. Oh, that's, that's better. I'm not a huge sci-fi, like, adventure game person. Yeah, Sakunaka, you have got the sound off, but you're enjoying the, the tunnel. Okay, cool. That's why I, I wish that Sierra had made more mystery games. Good. And now we have this other fin to do, which I think I will... Um, kind of do a shifting and fixing type of a thing. So I'm going to actually go with this one. Duplicate. And then this is going to be... Oh, gosh. Big Fin 2. Oh, it's a disaster. Put this over here. And yeah, I'm going to take this one and uh, shift it. Uh, Joey's here for you says, I think I've mentioned Jordan Mechner's The Last Express on here. It seems like an attempt at the evolution of the lore bone mystery style, though there's an actual in-game clock that advances no matter what you do. I've heard of Last Express. I've never played it. Is it you, do you guys recommend it? Groban Josh asks, have you played Gabriel Knight? I've played the first one. I've not played um, the second one or the third one. I really like Gabriel Knight. Um, I, like, I just like the, the context and the procedures that you have to you have to go through in a mystery game. You know, you ask questions, you explore, you get clues. My thing. Although I didn't play, I didn't play Gabriel Knight until much later, actually. Like until I had it on GOG. But it really does hold up. And I played the original one, of course. HRBT21, good to see you. Joe is here for you says it's all about eavesdropping and it's murder on a train, which is always cool. Oh, okay. A to, okay, A to B two twenty one says, Okay, last express absolute masterpiece. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. To be honest, I found the mystery completely impossible and impenetrable as a kid, but it's super cool looking and ambitious game. Joe's here for you. I'm I'm here for a cool looking ambitious game. Ooh, A to B T twenty one. I speak French, so it was fun eavesdropping on the French conversations. Ah. Ah, yes, yes, Groban Josh. Yeah, the first one's wonderful, um, Gabriel Knight. Um, yeah, Joe's here for you. I played one of the old pixel point and click Sherlock Holmes. Um, I think that I played the serrated scalpel, some of it, and it's beautiful. I've not played any of the newer ones. Yeah, I, I, get, I think the reason I didn't, I didn't really play, um, so the second one, and although I do, I have it on GOG and stuff, so I should eventually play it. I just never played it because it was FMV, and I, I'm not crazy about it. And the third one, 
is um, 3D, and I'm not big on that either. But yeah, I mean, I think I have all of them on GOG, so I really should. A to B T21, straight at scalpel. I'm not sure, but I think it might be the one about Jack the Ripper. But yeah, that Sherlock like Holmes game's really, game really stuck out to me as being gorgeous, and I've, though I've never tried anything else. So this fin is kind of nice because I feel like it's not going to be one that I'm just basically going to be shifting it and then drawing it again, I think. But it's cool that Jordan Mechner made it, yeah, The Lost Express, because I know that, you know, he, of course, made uh, Prince of Persia, which is super amazingly cool and groundbreaking. So it'd be cool to see what he does with the mystery genre. Interesting. Joe's here for you says, it's only just occurred to me. Mechner did a rewinding time mechanic for Last Express and then it flopped, so he just brought the concept over to Sands of Time, I guess. Oh, Sakunaka, you also like Last Express. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm... I, I'll, I'm gonna, I, I, it's on the list of things to look at, to check out. Now that I have a list. I'm definitely interested, because I do love mystery games, mystery adventure games. I guess in a way, um, Personal Nightmare was a mystery adventure game. Oh wow, Joyce here for you said, apparently Mechner's pitch at the time for Last Express was it was an adventure game from someone who doesn't like adventure games. Oh, and A2BT21 says Mechner's made four Stone Cold classics, Prince of Persia, Karataka, Last Express and Sands of Time. Haha. -ha. I remember Karataka. My my friend had Karataka. And and I and of course Prince of Persia. I've not played Last Express and I've not played Sands of Time, so I should get in on those. A tier, A tier, BT twenty one. Personal nightmare was a personal nightmare. Yeah, did you play it or did you just did you just watch me play it? It's a personal nightmare. What a game. Not easy. Borderline impossible. Now Joe's here. If he's, I think Prince of Persia two is great too. To be honest, though, he mostly just gave them a design bible and let Broderbund make it while he flew around the world. Oh, second account, you should do an Apple II Karataka stream. Yes! Yeah, I think that's what my friend had it on. Yes, and Prince of Persia, of course, got adapted into movies. I didn't even know there was more than one movie. Okay, hit a BT20 when you watch me play it. Okay. <laughs> that's honestly the probably the best way to experience personal nightmare is just to watch somebody else play it. I, there's a lot I like about that game though, to be honest. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in there. Ah uh, yes, you published Minor Mike says, Joda Mechner published two diaries as well, Karataka and Prince of Persia. Going into the development, etc. I have no idea if it's all true, but they are fun to read. Prince of Persia 2. Never played Prince of Persia 2. Second Akari say oh, it had some fun moments but felt rushed. Hmm. 
yeah, it's really cool that um, some people, some creators did write stuff like that. <laughs> Prince of Persia Diary, a fantastic read. Interesting. Yes, I remember seeing on Twitter the pixel art cover of um, the prince on the Prince of Persia one, the memoir. Really beautiful. Okay, I see. Second, I'm kind of blown away by some of the things they did in Prince of Persia 2. Harder to recommend because some really rough gameplay moments I know most people won't want to deal with. Ooh. Okay, HBT21 can highly recommend Ken Williams' book as well as the book of the Sierra Adventure for behind the scenes Sierra goodness. Yeah, I have not I don't have any of those. I haven't read any of them, but um it's really cool that that those they're out there, you know? documentation purposes. Yep, yeah, Prince of Persia 1, Sakunakaya, is, is, is a work of art. In, like, in design and in, like, the execution of it. Uh, Joe is here if you also recommends the Ken William book. Ooh! It to BT21, Red Sierra Adventure in one sitting basically in the hospital after my second kid was born. Oh, I love doing stuff like that, that intense, intense, intense reading. It's not bad. Hello! Fish is waving. Ah, oh, yes, A2BT21, you're going to, you can introduce your kid to the King's Quest goodness. You got to yeah, keep those, um, those games alive. I love seeing it. love hearing it. I love when parents introduce their kids to adventure games. Uh, Bill Coon, um, you have the Sierra Adventure as well by Sean Mills. You still have to buy Ken's book. Ooh, hopefully he will do autographs by postal mail. That would be nice. Maybe at the release of Colossal Cave 3D. Like, yeah, look, maybe when they're doing the rounds when Colossal Cave 3D releases, maybe uh, you can uh, meet him at an event or something. Yeah, that's a true. Like, it's true because I actually played um, Prince of Persia on my PC. But yeah, knowing that it was on the Apple II is kind of amazing. <laughs> You're right, Sakana Kao. Oh, Grab and Joe, you like the mug? The, yeah, the mug is, I guess, relatively big. But because, yeah, um, the, there's a bit of a, an optical illusion happening because it is closer to the camera. So it looks like it's bigger than my head, but it's not. But it's still a pretty big mug. Hmm. Last year, you have a great night. Happy Crimson Continues Day. Have a great rest of your week. Good luck with the development of Betrayed Alliance. I love seeing all the art come out of it. Oh. Ooh, Unheard is a good investigation game based only on sound. Or, well, the first one is pretty good invest investigation as well. Okay, I'm going to write these down. Unheard game and also Orwell. Game. First one. Yeah, waving fish might be a new Twitch icon. Yeah, I don't. It might be a bit too subtle. Uh, 
Ah, uh, <laughs> ATBT21, you tried with your six-year-old daughter to get her into adventure games, but she has negative patience. This is bounces all quick. Love iPad casual games, though. Yeah, I mean, six is still pretty young. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe she'll get it, grow into it, or maybe it won't be her thing. But it's nice, you know, that's what the parents are supposed to do, right? Like, put their kids in front of stuff, and hopefully some of it catches on. <laughs> Stein-sized mug. Uh, yes, Joe is here for you. I did indeed play Oberdin, and I finished it. I, I, I got a couple hints off the internet. Uh, maybe two or th two hints, maybe three hints, but overall I kind of did it myself. And I, I loved it. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Okay. So I think we have all the bits of the fish. It's just going to be a matter of next week. We're going to have to kind of do all the animation and put all that together. Plus shadow, plus water still. So there's still a little bit to go. But next week probably should be the last week of this particular scene. Um, it's 10.30, so we're going to move on to some Rise of the Dragon. So... Let me go to my big head, and yeah, I don't know why today it's not looking, uh, it's not looking too sharp with the, this, the, um, the screen here. The, but anyway, I'm going to save my fish bucket to my Google Drive, and then we're going to proceed. <laughs> that is one sexy fish. Thank you, Joe, is here for you. <laughs> um, close that. All right. Okay. Yes, fish needs a bit of breathing <laughs> breathing room. Go, Monsama. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, <laughs> ATPT one one missed last week. Caught up a few nights ago. Was laughing my butt off at the barbecue. <laughs> Yeah, I think, what, 30 times? I think 28, 27 or 28 to the barbecue and 3 for the rats for the wire puzzle. Not not my best showing. Let's change the tag. Rise of the dragon. Rise of the dragon. Done. So, I'm going to eat my snack. <laughs> and then we're going to move on to Rise of the dragon. Um, so, <clears throat> this is the perfect time for me to use... My eating emoji. Yes, your your death count lives on, Bill. Could I I found, I really liked it. Thank you. Um, well, I don't know. The, cap the captions have been going nonstop, so that's great. I'm gonna mute myself. I'm gonna eat my snack, and then we're gonna get into it. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Muting self.
Okie dokie. Yeah, I tried Bill Coon. I tried to change the tag to EGA and it didn't really work for me. Kind of just snapped back to being Rise of the Dragon. And tags, like it's the category is Rise of the Dragon. And I guess I could tag it as EGA and stuff, but I don't know if that's going to help at all. Um, I don't know how to do tags. I've never done tags. <clears throat> Between the borders, you say Google Drive is a solid choice. Raspberry Pi and use a USB hard drive, then setting up a private Git server. Reasonably cheap, easy for in-house version control system for our project. Run mine on a server. It's one, one of the best choices I ever made. Just, just after getting a UPS for my dev system, universal power supply. Um, it's probably a really good... Oh, last I streamed, you, you saw that it was their tags or nothing. Okay, I don't know. I mean, yeah, tags I've never used. But yeah, for category, it can't be Rise of the Dragon EG, unfortunately. Um, with a Git server and stuff like that. Maybe if I was shown how to do it, I am. Um, excuse me. It would, um, it would be like a good solution. But I, basically, like when I'm working on Crimson Diamond, it's when I zip the whole project, it's 63 megabytes. Um, so I don't need a very elaborate solution to to back that up. I keep a copy on my desktop. I keep a copy on my Google Drive. I keep a copy on my OneDrive. I keep a copy on a SSD and an external hard drive and my creative adobe creative cloud so there's like six places i tend to back up um every time and it's because it's only 63 megabytes zipped like it's hardly anything so that's kind of what i do i don't really need to do version control too much of anything really <clears throat> a to bt21 you're streaming oh you started up police quest 3. i've never tried any of the police quests i have just no interest <laughs> um even though i guess those would be considered mystery come to think of it oh you know what i'm gonna move this up <laughs> or move that something you know i'm gonna ch change the strange dungeon one because because you can see the caption better yeah it's funny because yeah police quest you could consider mystery series but i've never really thought of it in that way and they're so procedural that it just kind of turned me off okay Okay. Let's see here. If you put category of the game, I think they might fill out some tags for you automatically, but there's an extra window for custom tags. I did see the extra window for custom tags. Add your own tag. Add up add other tags. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I'm good for now. Um, in terms of like like backing up and stuff. I mean, if you put your name in, the, that's the category. I think it auto drops some tags for you. Yeah, it auto dropped action, adventure game, point to click, and fighting for some reason, which I'm kind of scared about. But um, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to our um, Rise of the Dragon. Get ready to fight. Yeah, I just apparently there's fighting in this game, and I'm not prepared whatsoever hopefully the fighting's better than um oh i gotta turn off the music hold on oh, oh no oh no okay i gotta turn down the music this game is really loud and i gotta turn off my other music okay oh i just did i i must have just closed it okay i gotta start it again okay okay don't worry about the fighting between the border says. Okay, good. Uh, okay, is that... Oh, I really don't like that, that dynamics, dynamics noise. Okay. Let me know if this is too... Oh, did I put... Oh, weird. Restore. Okay, got clever. Kevlar, got clever. Got Kevlar, Kevlar and Cookie Latest. Okay, here we are. So here we're at, we're with the guy. We totally, um... Hopefully, let me know if you can see this and hear this. I put the Kevlar on, I put my jacket back on. We got given this book that says, Don't worry, be happy on every page. We got this agate. Oh. Yes, our Kevlar six-pack. 
Joy's here. She says, but Julia, what of Loom? Why not yet Loom and EJ Necessity Loom, Julia? Well, the previous game to this was a LucasArts game, and so I, I haven't um, done Loom because I because I didn't want to follow up with another LucasArts game. I wanted to try a different studio. Oh yeah, so this was this. Uh, looks like an agate. I don't see it. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to open up the... So, so this um, fortune cookie... has um, a fortune, which I assume this is some kind of like thing I need to learn. Oh, so I'm going to take a picture of it. Give me a second. Okay, I've taken pictures. And this. Okay, that is an acceptable excuse for now, but Loom is very short at any rate. Yes, I hear, I hear, I have played it before, like ages ago, but I don't think I ever finished it. Okay. So I figure now um, we we wiretapped Johnny Kwong's phone. So I figure we should. Oh, you know what? Because we're in the neighborhood, I wanted to see if um, we could bomb this place. You know. So this is the little peekaboo thing, but yeah, we can also look at this area here. And I'm wondering if we could bomb these. Yeah, so this panel went out. So let's do that. Yeah, <laughs> between the borders, that stone has taken the biggest hit from EGA to VGA. Yeah, it doesn't look... It really does not... It does not look like a stone at all. Can I put this here? Ooh. Can I do another one? No, just one. Cool. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't have done this now? Maybe I shouldn't have done that? Ooh. I bet somebody's mad. Okay, so let's go. Was this game made in, in um, EG originally or no? This game was made originally in VGA, but if you wanted to have the EGA version, you could fill out a card that came in the box and send your, your discs in, and they would send you back the EGA version, so I'm told. Okay, so I'm not going to save it because I feel like that probably wasn't the, the way to, to do it. Probably wasn't supposed to do it. You got anything new to say? No. That's fine. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Actually, I want to see... Oh, City Hall's closed. Okay, never mind. I forget it's 8 o'clock. Okay. So let's go back to our place and see if our wiretap has come up with anything. Ooh, the res- Oh, we have a new um, thing here. Well, that's gonna win anyway. Here, we're all doomed. This is fine. This is new. I don't think I've ever been here, but there's no nothing to do. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do here. Okay. Go to our house. Oh, look, we have a, a thing. We have a message, a new message. I'm going to save. Okay, we have to save over something. Chen's apartment. Uh oh, Chen's. Okay. Uh. Message? Okay. Turn on. Insert ID card. Okay. Next. Next. Yes! So our thing worked. That's it. Oh, there's two of them. Nice. Okay, so this first one. Okay. 
Okay. Possible disruption. There's like a cyan. There's like a cyan pixel up there. Okay. Has changed directory, Bill Coon. I don't. Wait, does that work? Now on the DOS box? That didn't give me any real new information. Okay. The factory blew up? Yes, it destroyed by form of. Yay, that's us, William Hunter. The voice of Bahamut? I don't know. AT, 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 TerraBT21. Oh, I missed that. What did he say? I gotta see that again. I looked over and I missed it. Let's play that again. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll advance it. Please, please come to our factory headquarters on the northwestern outskirts to, to discuss this matter immediately. Okay, so maybe now we can go to the place. It, it, it kind of messes me up that I have to turn... I, the computer has to be on for me to turn on my card. And I have to take out the card when the computer's on. It feels wrong. Like, I feel like I should turn off the computer and then take the card out. Yeah, so I guess now I can go to the Hollywood place. Um, so anyway, I'm, I guess I'll save because all I did was listen to the messages. So I'm not gonna... I'm just gonna replace that because I haven't done anything. Okay, so now can we go here? It's... Oh, 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 new. Same face, pretty sure, ATBT21. That's the same EGA face that was in the buddy who was murdered a, a apartment. I don't, I don't, I would haven't. Wow, hello. Hello. Security pass. I left it at home. Oh, we need a pass? I've got this. Does this work? Hello? Can I shoot? What happens if I shoot him? I don't know how to shoot people. Do I just like rub the gun on his face? No? Okay, no, that doesn't work. Okay. Um. I give him. You never got this far in 19. I don't remember this one at all. Oh, I didn't know I could look at stuff. I keep forgetting that. So I'm not even armed with it. So what if I arm myself with it? Does he change his tune? No, he doesn't care. Okay, so a security pass. He looks hungry. <laughs> Give him the fortune cookie. Is this the security pass? I see. Oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, I've got Fisto. Clearly that's the right answer, not that. <laughs> hey, baby, human, good to see you. What if I shoot him? Julie has really got to play Police Quest too. Uh, yeah, like I guess like, if I can bribe him, that would that would probably be nicer, right? Here, he doesn't want it. How? Who doesn't want a Fisto candy bar? Um, okay, so we, maybe we don't have. Maybe we just don't have what we need. Hmm. Okay. Does he want an agate? I doubt it. No? Okay. Wow. Or maybe I'll go to the reservoir now. Cool. Cyberpunk. Um... Maybe something's happening here now? I don't know what this is for. I can't even like look at anything. Exit to M-Way. This isn't a thing to do. Oh, I tried the other guy's ID card on the, the guard. It didn't really do anything. This is, yeah. 
Oh, whoa, what's this? What was that? What's that? Oh, I can shoot. Okay, so if I hold the right one down, and because I've got the gun into my hand, I can shoot. Okay, well, let's go back. HBT21, my favorite all time PQ death is PQ2, where you can die crossing the road unless you push the button to activate the crosswalk light. I can't shoot him. Um, yeah, the same thing happens in uh, Dagger if I'm on Raw. If you don't look both ways before you cross the street, it, um, she gets run over by a car. Well, that's. I can't shoot him. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Let's see. Johnny Quarks. Maybe go back to the Pleasure Dome? I believe you, Beta Human. P PQ2 is a cavalcade of wondrous opportunities for m fatal missteps. Yeah, this this has been so oh, so far so good. Oh, the care- oh, you're right to us here, Few. The- the- the-, the um, when I was trying to shoot him, he had this idea that he was gonna go somewhere. So yeah, maybe he's going to do that. Yeah, you're right. I think he said something. It was up there before he tried to shoot him. Yeah, I think I totally missed his message. So maybe I'll go back. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I really should be paying more attention. Oh. I'm tired, too. I need Fisto. So I guess I just slept. So he's gonna leave. Oh, oh, it's noon now. I gotta restore. <laughs> Can you stay awake past your bedtime in this game? Because it's noon now. Um, what's it say that Fisto is? It's got caffeine in it? Or not? Black market. It's just sugar. Okay. Okay. I gotta... Okay. I can just wait there. That's what I'll do. Yeah, for a second I got... You forgot about Fisto? I, I, I got two bars of this stuff. And I haven't found a use for either. Okay. We're gonna go to Den Hang Quangs and we're gonna wait it out. Yeah, George, here for you. I love when video games let you do things you can't do in real life, like stay up past your bedtime. Board security guard. Okay. I just have to wait. That's true. A to BT21, I would not mess with a dude wearing body armor having a nap on the street. I know I wouldn't. Okay, what if I, like, slowly advance the time? Okay. So he's gonna sleep in an hour. He's still here. What if I- can I leave and come back? Oh, come on, Blade. Okay, that thought balloon belongs to Blade? Okay. Th I need to go to sleep in an hour, not the security card. <sighs> okay, so that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Yeah, this protagonist is the sleepy baby. I, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should just go to sleep and just do the next day? I feel like I'm gonna- someone's gonna come to my apartment and kill me because I bombed the factory. I feel like that's gonna happen. But I can't really think of anything else to do. And I bet he was robbed during his nap. 
But he, he had a gun in his hand and he, <laughs> and he was a Kevlar. It looks like I still have my full complement of stuff. So there's this, which we haven't really resolved. Which I did take a picture of. I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to talk to my friend. Who um, gave me all the stuff. Maybe he has something to say about the bombing. And here's the thing, is like, Blade doesn't just fall asleep. He sleeps until noon, so he sleeps like 12 hours. Which seems like, I don't know, a bit indulgent. Oh, they, they, oh, they steal the fistos between the borders. Oh, they should. They should. Haha. <laughs> hey. Got anything new to say? Okay, no. I like that. I'd like to say that to people instead of goodbye. Leave this place or destiny is elsewhere. Um I don't know. It could just be a matter of I need to wait until the next day. That code looks like an old cipher you had as a kid. Had lots of Xerox magazines with game walkthroughs where the answers were in code. It kind of, like, if I had to guess, it looks like maybe they're, like, colors or something. Like red, yellow, purple, white. I can't even go in here. Okay, yeah, the one of those ones where you transpose the letters or whatever. Okay. Yes, I'm waiting on the patch analysis between the borders, so I could be that I just should go to bed. I should just go to bed. Caesar's code is it's called when you when you move the letter down. Yeah, Bill Coon says in the future, even in a crap metropolis and crime everywhere, chocolate's outlawed. Everyone gets twelve hours of sleep every night. Yeah, they know what's important. They do. Ah, oh, the fire looks like the fire elemental. So I'm here, I'm gonna just sleep, I guess. I'm just... I'm just gonna advance time until I sleep. Yeah, hopefully Karen didn't get bored and tried the patch. The, and the fire coming out of the door looked like the fire elemental. Maybe I need to put earth on it. Or make it worse. Okay, he's tired. He said he's gonna sleep for an hour. He ends up sleeping for 12 hours. Okay, so fall asleep. You, want, you know you want to, so do it. He's, does he not? When you're in his, his... He does, right? Yeah, here we go. Uh, home sweet home. Sure beats sleeping on the sidewalk. Oh, well, at least we got to see this. Right? Nice. Noon. Save. This is like day three. Three, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna change directory. What, what? How can I do this? More? No, it's invalid. Oh no. Okay, never mind. It's okay. Um. Day three? I don't. I, I've not even counted. So it's impossible to meet up with Karen yet before noon, ever. And I do remember there's a time when I could talk to the mayor, and I don't know why I can't. But anyway, let's talk to Karen. Okay, I have to create the character in DOS first. Gotcha. Then you have to switch. I like, I really like this music. She's so happy. Okay, a lab report. I like how everything is basically the same except you can just be nice. Oh, 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 oh. Normal DNA. This is great.
watch your backside. Okay. Okay, cool. Anything else I'd like her to look at? Yes, Den Huang, please. Sleeper gate attached to this file. Set up an alarm and wipe the system? Uh-oh. I can try to bypass it. You go, girl. If it is, doesn't work, we could be in a very unhealthy situation. Run the trace. Okay, two years old. So she did it. Yikes. Details classified. Okay, something strange. Cool. You're good at your job. Nice. This is totally the thing, A to BT21. Let's look at our VHS. Straight out of John Carpenter. Lab workup. Cool. Wonder if we can see the mayor at this point. Okay, so I got the VHS. Oops. Day three. Got VHS. Okay. Can we talk to you? I'd like to see, yeah. Not to be disturbed. Do I have to sweet talk him? Okay, so we can't. He's just busy. And we still don't have anything at the... I don't have passes for anything. I don't have a pass for anywhere. It's a bummer. <laughs> Bill Kinta, super good looking female computer hacker with City Hall connection, voiced by the awesome Tress McNeil. Karen's definitely a keeper. And Jenny looks like the church lady from SNL. I, I like them both. Shoot, actually, Jenny reminds me of um, that woman in Ghostbusters. So, what am I supposed to do with this information? Um, this guy is. Are you the. I think we already had this conversation with this guy. I guess maybe when he's more talkative in the afternoon. Yes, we have had this conversation. Yes, Janine. Jenny reminds me of Janine from Ghostbusters. Okay. I don't know. While I'm in this area, I could just... Um, I'm going to check in with our, our guy here. Got anything you to say? Nope. What do you think of this? Where'd it go? No? Oh, you know what? I wonder if we show Jenny the tape. Because it's very serious looking. Oops. I will figure this out eventually. No? Oh, you know what? Maybe this, this the flower lady likes the agate. Maybe she could tell me about that. Because maybe she's not into flowers anymore, right? But... <laughs> Janine says, yeah, we got one. I, have, I haven't seen Ghost Burgess in a really long time. Drop. Exit. Yeah, inventory's a little clunky. I kind of appreciate it for the most part. Okay, so that was a kind of a... We did get the report. Oh, you know, maybe we'll visit the Pleasure Dome.
I want to go to the reservoir just because we didn't have anything to do there in the in the nighttime. So I wonder if there's anything in the morning. No, it's it's the same. There's nowhere to nothing to do. Never mind. Okay. So before we go to the pleasure dome, I'm going to drop my gun off. Yeah, buy one pleasure, get one free, bit of human. I, I'd like to think there's more there to do. Like, maybe I can give the tape to the Jake or something. Because I feel like someone else should know about this. We do still have a bomb. But anyway, it's fine. Okay, got some news. Okay, he's got some news. HRBT21, have a great night. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. Oh, he'll give me a call. Sweet! This is interesting. Yeah, see you next week. Yeah, I'm gonna watch out for those dastardly nicotine patches. Are these people still up and... In... Oh, okay. No, they're not... They don't like me. Okay, I guess I'll just leave and uh, wait until the Jake contacts me. Have a great rest of your week! Let's go this way. We didn't really do anything this way before. So this guy's name is Pat, which is kind of funny. What if I show him something? What if I show him... Let's just try showing people things. Because I haven't done anything with this guy yet, and I kind of want to. Oops. What do you think of that? Nope. I don't even remember why we initially talked to this guy. What if we what if we just give him a, a chocolate bar? No. Nothing. There's a Spatula City commercial. Bill Coon. I don't think any of these things are gonna... I don't even know who this guy is, so I don't even know why I'm doing this. No? Okay. Well, why don't we hurry home and see if Jake, the Jake is cold. Oh, UHF? I haven't seen UHF. Mm -hmm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. UHF is a very silly time. <laughs> Oh, Mousemish recommends UH, uh, UHF. Magic. Let's see if the Jake's called us. Anyway, if you've seen it, you... Orange mat of mashed potatoes. Okay, the Jake hasn't called yet. Oops, that's the right one. Okay. Nothing. So I wonder if like we we should have done that a day earlier, maybe. <laughs> Can you play the Crimson Diamond on this compression on this computer? <laughs> Wheel of fish. Oh my gosh! Maybe we should have gone to the Pleasure Dome yesterday. Okay, you know what? We can do that. We can do that. Um, let's try that. Restore to message. Because I'm sure the pleasure dome is going to be fine. Um, so it's 
So maybe because maybe Jake needs a, a knight or something, right? A knight. Time has to pass. So I will try that. Because that's the only thing I really did, right? You can play um, Crimson Diamond on a Windows 98 computer? Or Windows XP? I can't remember. Someone tested it. I think someone in this very chat tested it. Okay, TCD definitely works on Windows XP, and Eden Wraith probably was the one that tested it. Alright, cool. Okay. Okay, right. What if I give try to give him the... Oh, I don't have the tape yet. That's right, haha. Okay, anyway, that's fine. Okay, yeah, someone else tried Windows 98, it didn't work. Okay, so I did, I think, and then I went on the Steam page and I updated it to say Windows XP. Okay, so now we're going to go to bed. We're going to wake up. Hopefully we'll have a message from the Jake and we can pick up the report from Karen. I like there's bananas in the dystopia. Okay, advance time. This is like Stardew Valley. Come on. Do it. Okay. Okay. Between the borders says, since XP and modern Windows systems are NT-based, it makes sense that that would be the oldest that would support it. Yeah. When, yeah, Windows XP. I feel like that's, that's perfectly respectable. Okay, so we still don't have... It's too bad they don't have day and night screens in this because it is kind of hard to keep track of time. So we still don't have a message from the Jake by the looks of it. I really like the fact that there's that light on there to give us a visual cue. Um, but yeah, let's go to Karen, do that bit, and maybe by the time we get home the Jake's message will be there. Maybe he gets up later than us. What about Windows 2K or Windows NT? I don't know. It's a very good question. You don't wait. <laughs> Win me. <laughs> uh, was it Millennium Edition or was it just... Okay, cool. Karen, thank you. Yeah, Marcel said, I don't recall a daytime scene in Blade Runner. Future might be perpetual night. Yeah, maybe it's so polluted that it's just always overcast or something. <laughs> okay. Yes, Den Huang. Yes, of course they want you to. Yes, yeah, so he's a bad guy, no traces, Chinese mafia, etc. Got it. I, this is a nice font that they have here. Nice low res font. Very legible. It's Dana Scully. She does have the Dana Scully hair. It's got fantastic volume. It's, it's just amazing. Okay, so we did that. So I'm going to just save it because we actually did that a bit more efficiently. Yeah, no, it's true. Blade Runner is very overcast all the time. World War Terminus resulted in that. Brightest sky ever gets a sunset-like view we get from the inside of the Tyrell building. Yikes. Eating Way says, if you make Karen mad, she doesn't help you and you can't complete the game, I think. Or is it possible to complete the game without her help? I have no idea. It's a game is challenging enough for me. Uh, I don't think, yeah, we didn't really do anything new yet. We, Reservoir doesn't do anything. I 
I don't think there's anything new at Johnny Kwong's. Well, anyway, before we go all the way home, let's just do let's just do a circuit of places. Okay, if you don't wake up, she doesn't return your keys, you can't get the bombs, you can't blow up the factory. Okay. Let's check if this guy's got any new messages, I suppose. No, nothing new. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's anything... There shouldn't really be anything new in these areas. But I was kind of hoping there might have been a new message or something, but I think everyone knows he's dead. Yeah, we already opened the safe that's down here. Although, let's... Let's make the dragon rise. Rise of the dragon. We already opened this, so it's fine. Gorgeous. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna go exactly. Johnny Kwong's. I don't remember Johnny Kwong's. I made the dragon rise. It did. Oh yeah, this. So we don't need to do anything here because that was just the wiretapping puzzle. Karen's. I'm just going to do the rounds because it's kind of on the way. Yeah, she's not at home. We know she's not at home. There's no way to get there. Okay, no... We know we can't go into City Hall either. I don't know, I'll just go home, I guess, to see if Jake, the Jake's got my message yet. No, he hasn't called yet. Aw, Sakana Ka, thank you so much for the sub. Yay! Yes, I made the dragon rise, after all. What is going on here? I don't know really what to do now. Oh, I forgot to take this stuff. That's something I forgot to do. But I don't really think it matters. Yes! It has an emote! Second account. Yeah, actually, even um, followers can also use the emote as well, but just in my channel. But now you can use it anywhere! You can spread the bucket. I don't know. I'm kind of stuck right now. Um, final save. Day three. I still have day three Garfi H. I haven't really done anything. There's no real reason. There's no real reason to save because I haven't really done anything. Actually. Hmm. What if I try to shoot the guy on Johnny Kwong's house? I mean, I might need to wait for an e uh, for a meanwhile in the phone call. It's just saving and sleeping the day just to check. Okay, we'll do that. That's I will try that. I will try that. Second account, possibly the most painstakingly crafted emote on Twitch. You you actually might be tr like correct about that considering the amount of hours put in. But I mean, obviously, it was not meant exclusively for. A Twitch emote. I, I I don't really need to save between the borders because I haven't I, I, I saved at the VHS, which is the only progress I made today. So I'm not really gonna bother. I'm just gonna hang out in my room. Oh, meanwhile, there we go. Yeah, I just had to wait an hour for the meanwhile. Here we go. Short notice meeting. Short notice. 
<clears throat> right. Right. I have been a severe disruption in their MTZ. They're gonna come after me, aren't they? That guy's super beefy. He looks like, um... Oh, Brother Kong failed to stop me. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. These are really nice screens. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All that he cares for- uh-oh. I don't- see the thing is with these types of meanwhiles is I don't- am I supposed to know them? Right? There's still no message on this machine. I guess I should go warn Karen. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to know that information, though. That's kind of the difficulty I have narratively with this. Nothing. But I guess, I mean, that kind of would prompt me to go to, to see Karen to warn her. <laughs> Marasimus, those pictures, a lot of work for a few seconds on screen reminds me of something. Yeah, the, yeah, between the borders, yeah, I, I, the machine, I know, it's so cool that it does flash from this screen to see the message, but I just was double checking because I really don't know how much longer I can wait for the Jake to contact me. But I will save this as, um, I'm going to save it here, I think, as day three, day three, after they're after me. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to City Hall and warn Karen. So that's my, my, my goal. Um, I don't think there's anything for her to look at. Um, i give this to her. Oh, she doesn't like that. I, sorry, I forgot. Okay, give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, give me a second. Um, how about this book? People used to read them a long time ago. She must think I'm an idiot. I know it's a book. I hope you could tell me something. Yeah, I'll show her more stuff. This is interesting. How about this rock? How about my shiny rock? Oh, sh Okay, no, we're not giving it to her. No, she doesn't get my rock. She doesn't get it. She doesn't. No. You know, in the context, in the context of our conversation, you know that I'm showing you stuff. Why would you just keep something? Simon K, 1176, good to see you. She looks like Kelly Preston. I don't know what Kelly Preston looks like. I should look that up. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, there's no message yet. Um, and I couldn't warn Karen about the fact that people are coming to kill her. What else can I do? It's almost time to be finished. I'm finishing at 11.30, so we will need someone to raid. So that's something that we need to think about. But, um, yeah, I'm wondering what else I can do besides just waiting in my apartment for something to happen. We still haven't done anything at the reservoir. So I'm kind of interested. No. Nothing here. Nothing, nothing even to look at. Okay. Aw, oh, looks like her when she smiled. Oh, that's really sweet. 7K1176. I should look her up. can kind of see that a little bit. Oh, Marasmus says, Robot Spacer started Amon Ra, attempt number two after getting a bad ending. 
That's right, because I actually have been watching the VODs, and he got, he's gotten right near the end, so I... I raided Cobra Commander last week, so I totally would be up for, for a raiding Robot Spacer this week, because um, Dagger Valmon Ra is the thing. Is the thing. I don't know where else to go. They want to kill me, so isn't this better for them if I just show up? I also see someone playing the Chris of Glory randomizer. We mentioned Mr. PR Miller. Hmm. Well, I'm puzzled. I think it's. Let me take a look at what our options are. Okay, day three, they're after me. Um, so, so that's kind of. I'm gonna just restore to that. Because we haven't really done anything significant since then. I'm just going to save this as latest. Interesting. I'm not sure what to do now. I'm just still waiting for the J to get back to me. They're after me. Latest. Day three. Need. Jake. Call. Latest. Okay. Oh, we raided uh, Mr. P.R. Miller before. Okay, so let me take a look. Um, that is just play. Let's just leave this running so you guys, you guys can in, um, continue to enjoy the awesome... <laughs> oh wow, this is not even oriented properly. We can continue to enjoy the awesome... The awesome music and the beautiful view of this game. But I will take a quick look. Uh, and see about raiding. Oops. No, I didn't want to do that. Uh, let's see here. Yes, Simon K. 1176. This is very Blade Runner. You play a guy named William Hunter, and apparently he also likes to be called Blade. And he's some kind of detective guy. And it's the dystopian future of Los Angeles in 20... 53 or something. Um, so Mr. P.R. Miller. Let's see. Am I following Mr. P.R. Miller? I raided him and I haven't... I don't follow? Let's see. Mr. P.R. Miller. Mr. P.R. Miller is playing Quest for Glare Randomizer. Let's take a look here. I'm just seeing an ad right now. Uh, but yeah, um, while we're waiting on all this, I'll just say thank you everyone for coming tonight. Happy Crimson Cut Tuesday. Happy rest of your week. Hope it's a good one. And we'll see you next week. Um, it's going to be another art stream, pretty sure. Um, and more Rise of the Dragon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, he's really going at it super, super, super fast. Oh my gosh. Okay. So... <laughs> yes, good night, Simon K, 1176, Goman Sama, Edenwaith, Mouse Yes, until Edenwaith, until next week, Crimson Crew. See you. Okay, this is kind of fascinating to me. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know what? Oh my gosh. I think he's near the end, and it's been 34 minutes. He's moving so fast, it's ridiculous. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess in the spirit of trying something new, and I've always kind of been... Well, not always, but ever since I heard about Quest for Glare Randomizer, I've been intrigued, so why don't we do that? So, I'm going to set up the raid. Raid Mr. P.R. Miller. Quest for Glory Randomizer. Is that it? Okay, perfect. Okay, all set up. Happy Crimson Cut Tuesday. See you next week. Oh, so nice to hang out with you guys again. Um, it's always really good. Okay, hold on. Let us see. Um, here, we're going to see if everyone gets on that bus. Bye! Joe's here for you! <laughs>
And yes, EGA games. If I can get my hands on an EGA version of Cruise for a Corpse, I am super into it. Uh, so if anyone listening right now has an EGA version of Delphine's Cruise for a Corpse, I'm all about it. I would like to play that next, if possible. Um, it's been a real scavenger hunt, treasure hunt type of thing looking for these EGA versions, but I, I, I want to play them. I want to enjoy them. And I guess part of the challenge kind of makes it more rewarding to play? I don't know. Anyway, um, let's get over there. Oh, you have a download of it, Masmus? Well, if it's not available, I mean, if there's a place for me to buy Cruise for a Corpse VGA, I will do it and then play the download. That's totally fine with me. Um, we'll take a look. We'll, we'll think about it. Anyway, we're, out, we're gone. Have a great week. See ya. Woo!